Leo Cornelia, also known far and wide as the Ultimate Knight, hears someone call her from behind, making her muscular body halt and turn around. She looks at the puny sideman with one eye and tells him to cross swords with someone else since she leaves amateurs like him in pieces. He rejects her words, telling her she has it all wrong, and gets down on one knee and proposes to the fearless knight with flowers, telling her that he loves her as a woman. Leo stares at him with surprised eyes. This was a first for her. Nonetheless, she maintains her attitude and instead tells him she understands his little tricks since no man could fall in love with a woman with scars on her body. Holy Dent disagrees with her, telling her that he is the man who truly loves her. Hangry now, Leo withdraws her sword to silence him, demanding he move out of the way. Otherwise, she will cut him down as she points her sword towards him. Yet, Holy stands firmly in place, a bit shaken but not moved. Instead, he screams out his inner feelings for the night, telling her how he fell in love with her the moment he laid eyes on her beauty. His sweet words about her beauty and, well, attractive abs makes her feel embarrassed and the moment he calls her the most beautiful girl in the world, our fearless knight becomes blank. Blushing bright red, she slowly whispers how he is the first person who has ever expressed such feelings for her. Shielding her face with her arm, she races away from him, leaving our holy Dent confused and all alone in his place. We are given a brief introduction of Leo Cornelia, who has been dubbed as the undefeatable Holy Blade. It has been rumored that she was born to fight and raised to kill every monster that comes her way. Impregnable and undefeated, she has wielded her blade for the sake of her country, and this was the woman whom Holy has fallen in love with. Back to reality, Holy follows his knight in shining armor, who turns a cold shoulder towards him. She demands him with a grim expression over why he has been following her, to which she tells his wish to help her in her quests. Still sore after his words of love, she tells him to leave since she doesn't need anyone to accompany her anywhere. But before he could leave, Holy notices a critical cut on her torso, which makes him squeal in fright as he notices blood pour out of it as well. Asking her how she received the cut, Leo disregards it as just a scratch and has bigger matters to attend to, like fighting. Holy dashes in front of her and moves his hand towards her stomach to touch it, making her move back and defend herself. However, he has good intentions and casts a healing spell on her to cure the wound. This surprises Leo, who didn't expect an average person to cast such a high-level spell. With a sincere look on his face, Holy tells her that he never wishes to see the girl he loves in pain or danger. This makes her blush more and even asks him how long does he plan to keep touching her, getting Holy to only give an embarrassed reply of doing this as a medical procedure. But his perverted look and getting a bit too touchy with her makes Leo smack him on the head and leave pissed off. That night while showering, she slowly thinks of the flowers and his outburst words of love that really startled her. The water splashes on her scar-covered body, yet despite the hardened skin achieved by years of training, Leo was still soft inside and couldn't get him out of her mind. Sadly, her dreams of someone loving her are crushed when she reminds herself of how no one can truly love her because she can never be a woman again. Flashback into the past, Leo shows us the path that shaped her into becoming a knight, and that too without her choice. Born as an only child in a family of knights, she was raised by a strict father, who made her cast her womanhood aside and carry the sword towards becoming a knight. Now the battlefield that she treads on is her place to survive. Leo slashes through the gut at the towering one-eyed monsters, their blood splatter left and right around her. However, their vast numbers show no signs of falling, but our brave knight has reached her limit and is unable to move the arm that carries her sword. Death starts knocking on her door. She knows she doesn't have much time. A gigantic monster plunges towards her, aiming to finish her off with one move. Leo tells herself this is the end for her heroism. Out of nowhere, she is swooped away by Holy, who comes to her rescue. He tries his best to heal her, but our arrogant protagonist doesn't wish to be groped right now, especially when she's about to die. Anger surging out of her, she pushes Holy aside and with one swooping arm, Arm cuts the monster in half, all thanks to Ho Lee, who had already healed her arm in seconds. Ho Lee explains how he had found her location by asking around town, and the moment he found out that she had gone to fight monsters alone, he had rushed to her side. His heroic act isn't met by words of appreciation, but instead is scolded by her for risking his life for the sake of a fighter who could never stand by his side as a woman, and tells him to leave her alone. Ho Lee quietly listens and tells Leo that he knows about the problems and isn't one bit bothered by them at all. Instead, his love for her scars, her manly personality, and ability to fight is what attracts him the most. This makes her turn crimson red, but Holy makes way to leave since he feels that he has been bothering her a bit too much. This act is met by a punch on his head, and Leo tells him if he is so serious about her and has come this far, might as well continue the journey with her, and also warns him with the fact that no matter how hard he may try, she will not change, but he can still continue to like her. And this marks the day that a female knight is treated like a woman, until she slowly decides to change. Holy asks her if she knows how to cast magic, to which Leo tells him she has no use for it since she already just cuts her enemies open. 
She does proceed to cast a magic spell to show him her powers, but ends up performing a blasting spell upon herself. This shocks poor Ho Lee, who tends to her wounds and later tries to help her cast it properly. He requests to see her hand for a moment, which is rather surprising, but she lets him, and he holds her hand in his and asks her to now cast a spell, since he will control her mana in the right direction. She does so, and sends out a huge gust of power. He holds her hand tighter, which makes her question his behavior, but Holy tells her that with less contact, it will be difficult for her to channel her mana, and slowly gets more close to her as possible. Until their noses touch out of pure fear, the Greatest Knight sends off a magical explosion similar to that of the Greatest Sorcerer. She reprimands him for looking straight into the eyes of a knight, to which he dismisses any hidden meanings that were in her mind. He does ask her why she was so smug when he had proposed to her with flowers a day before. Leo calls him a playboy, who must have proposed to thousands of girls before him, but her assumption is cut short when he tells her that she is his first love. This made the female knight a little happy. We are now at the royal capital with Leo, who has a day off and is busy exploring the city. She finds a young girl celebrating her birthday, and recalls how it's her birthday as well today, but sadly has never celebrated it with anyone. Ho Lee calls her name, making her turn and is left dumbfounded by his new appearance. With an expressionless face and a smart appearance, he leaves Leo speechless when she catches an eye of him. Even she couldn't help agreeing to the fact that he was looking rather cool. Making small talk to her, Holy comes closer and closer and slowly moves his hand behind his back towards her. Leo assumes the worst and thinks he is her enemy who is planning to hurt her in the worst way possible. However, he pulls out a gift and wishes her a happy birthday. His efforts really make us raise eyebrows since they all have double meanings in it. Handing her the box, he tells her it's a necklace that will help enhance her magical skills. Too nervous to speak, she thanks him for the gift and quickly leaves the scenario. Back home, Leo tries out the pretty necklace, which goes perfectly with her opayan dress. However, her father doesn't care and demands that she gets ready for training the next day. The knight stares in the mirror for over an hour. We're guessing even love can turn the strongest knight into a softie. Another quest has been completed, with loads of time for the two to spare, and they decide to use it elsewhere. Leo tells him about her plan to go shopping, and if he wishes, he can tag along with her. Eyes filled with surprise, Ho Lee could not believe his ears at what he had been invited to, and happily agrees, calling this hangout a date. Their so-called date isn't the most romantic experience, and Leo drags him into a weapon shop which Leo had no intention of going to, since he has no use for the weapons. Nonetheless, Leo shows him the different swords and weapons, and Ho Lee is still speechless at what to buy, since his idea of going shopping was actually to go and buy clothes and food, but here he is now, being made to choose a weapon to protect himself. Leo takes out a scythe and starts swinging it around to see if it'll be perfect for her new friend slash lover. She does notice Ho Lee's bored expression, and tells him if he was thinking of going to a clothes shop for shopping like other girls, then she could not do that, and he should probably find someone else for that job. To that, Ho Lee expresses his feelings of being happy while seeing the person he loves happily talk about their passions and desires. This hits her in the heart, and our brave knight is slayed once again by his words of love. Brushing aside the feelings with an awkward smile, Leo tells him to buy the scythe and Morningstar weapon. Looks like Miss Leo's smile did not come cheap, and poor Ho Lee could not even perfectly pick up the weapons with ease. The next day has arrived, and Ho Lee waits for Leo in the village, but she is relatively late for some reason. She does come back later, but isn't her usual self, and starts coughing. Ho Lee notices that she is sick, and is actually coughing her lungs out, but Miss Brave Knight Leo isn't one to admit that she needs to visit a doctor. He reaches out and touches her forehead, which makes her surprised since he touched her. Ho Lee feels that she is burning up and quickly suggests that they should go to a doctor. She does try to smack him, but her weak punches are easy to dodge, which is another reason why it's important to get help. Knowing perfectly this lion isn't one to be tamed or one to admit she needs help, Ho Lee swoops her off the ground like a man and takes the surprise Leo to the doctor. It seems like the roles have been reversed here. Miss Leo is the one for once who is acting like a lady and is enjoying being carried away. Well, not entirely enjoying it. Ho Lee calls her heavy due to her armor, to which she remarks she is not one bit ashamed for being heavy, since she is not girly and has worked years to gain her said body structure. She tells him to put her down, since she doesn't want anyone to see her in such a vulnerable state, but Ho Lee reassures her he would take her through the empty back roads. With a serious face, he tells her his pride would be plighted if he doesn't help the woman he loves, especially when she's sick. This again is something that makes her feel happy and loved inside, but doesn't admit it. Nonetheless, the smile that does form on her face speaks millions of what she internally feels, as she tells herself that being weak sometimes isn't all that bad. The next day, they go out for a quest, and Leo slashes a mushroom monster in half. However, it does emit a strange gas out of its cap that engulfs her. Worried sick, Ho Lee calls out her name, 
Once the gas disappears, he sees her feeling rather dizzy, and she complains about her body feeling all tingly. Holy thinks to himself if the gas that came out of the Desire Shroom's cap was actually a hypnotic gas. Leo falls on Holy with an embarrassed look and tells him that she wants to take a closer look at him. It is here that he realizes that she isn't hypnotized, but has become a victim of an aphrodisiac, an effect where her desire comes out. While Holy is busy trying to prevent Leo from getting too far with her desires with him, another Desire Shroom makes its way towards them secretly. Holy notices it and is scared, but our knight wants no interruptions with her moment around her lover, and slashes it in half, telling it not to in the moment. However, the dead Desire Shroom emits another batch of gas, which has now engulfed Ho Lee, and he is the next victim of his desires. Leo notices him becoming all quiet all of a sudden, and is sad that maybe he doesn't want a mannish girl like her to be all over him like that. But he furiously grabs her shoulder, and looks her directly in the eyes, and tells her how turned on he is right now by her. Expressing his burning desires for her, and the fact that he can't hold it back any longer, he holds her waist and pulls her closer to himself. The two slowly move closer and closer to each other, and are just seconds away from having their first kiss. Ho Lee is dazed by the gas, while Leo is trembling by the moment, until she finally punches him straight in the face, sending poor Ho Lee flying in the air. The effect of the gas only lasts one minute, which explains why Leo smacked Ho Lee to the moon. It's a new day, and Leo makes her way home after shopping, but notices Ho Lee from afar, and decides to be the first to greet him for once. Above that, she is also in a good mood, so she doesn't have much choice. But she notices a petite female next to him, a female who has big boobs, a cute thin figure, and is extremely close to Ho Lee for reasons unknown to her. Following the two close behind, our brave knight is filled with tons of questions about his relationship with the girl, and even cracks a wall out of pure anger when she sees them happy together. Not only does she have long pretty hair, but she is dressed up and extremely close to Ho Lee, holding his arm and caressing her chest against it. Leo suddenly is quiet, and deeply hurt, since she isn't one bit girly, and maybe Ho Lee has left her, and she overhears the girl saying how happy she is that they get to go out on a date. Anger is boiling inside of her. She recalls his passionate words about how he doesn't care about petite girls, and instead it has fallen head over heels for her. The girl leaves Ho Lee, and seconds later he is pulled back by an angry Leo, who throws him against the wall and with a grim, deathly look, punches it, demanding he tell who the girl next to him was. Demanding a reply while she is still calm, Ho Lee is unable to explain, and tells her to calm down. Tears forming in her eyes, she hurtfully demands that he tells her. The knight has never before felt the emotions of jealousy, and thus, this was her way to counter it. Before Holy could tell who the girl was, she appears before them, and with an angry scowl tells the Holy Blade to back off and not lay a finger on him. The girl does not listen to Ho Lee when he tries to subdue the heated conversation, explaining how it's all just a misunderstanding. She dashes towards the knight and emits an electrifying punch at her, which Leo easily blocks but is also impressed by its power. The girl tells Leo not to bully her big brother, which just explains everything. Ho Lee butts in, and introduces everyone to each other. Apologies are also exchanged between the two girls for the misunderstanding, and this makes him happy. However, behind his back, Henri shows her tongue to the knight. It seems she has a big brother complex. A few days have passed since that event, but Henri secretly follows Leo around to see what she's up to. Leo, now tired of the spying, tells her to come out into the open and tell her what she wants. Henri tells her how she wishes to battle the knight, and gets into a fighting position. Leo agrees, but asks why she wishes to battle, to which Henri tells her to leave her brother alone. Which is surprising, since he was the one who never left Leo alone. Nonetheless, Henri dashes towards Leo with all her might, and is ready to give her first hit, but all her clothes tear up due to the power, leaving her chest exposed for everyone to see. Using her hands to cover them, she falls down and is embarrassed. Leo lends her one of her clothes to save her respect, and Henri leaves, demanding another battle in the future. Leo and Ho Lee are deep in the forest, and come across a pack of goblins. Leo can't seem to control the hiccups that she keeps getting, but Ho Lee finds this extremely cute. The goblins attack them in vast numbers, and the undefeated warriors kill them one by one, while hiccuping. With the battle over, she thanks Ho Lee for the help, but is extremely embarrassed by the hiccups, which don't seem to stop. They do clear up later, but the entire time Ho Lee is too mesmerized by the adorableness and cuteness of his lover. Fighting battle after battle is tough for any warrior, let alone a female knight. One of the reasons why Leo stretches her shoulder blades, showing clear stress and pain while doing so, and even comments how her shoulders are a little stiff. Ho Lee observes the situation, and tells her it's because she has been taking many high-ranking quests without proper rest, to which she painfully agrees. Out of nowhere, he suggests that maybe he could massage her shoulders, which is surprising since where did he even get that sort of an idea? Nonetheless, Leo is a bit hesitant at the start, but tentatively agrees to let him get close and comfortable in that sense. I mean, it's just a shoulder massage, right? Ho Lee sets her down on a big boulder and places his soft hands on her shoulders and gets to work. 
His magical hands are a gift from God. The toughest and most feared knight is helpless against him and starts moaning the moment he massages her shoulders. Face turning amber red, she never realized a shoulder massage would feel this good. Holy asks her if something is wrong, to which she says it's nothing other than the fact that it is not that bad. He is, however, surprised that her shoulders are very stiff every time he rubs them. Pushing a bit too hard on them, he makes the knight softly tell him to be gentle. That is when he takes the initiative and proceeds towards her lower back, which makes her become alert and quickly tell him that the back is off limits, thinking to herself that maybe Holy is a pervert who just wants to touch more of her body. Face filled with determination and zero perviness, he tells her that it is for her own good and he needs to take care of her since she has been pushing herself to the limit. Confused at his innocence, she apologizes and allows him to go down on her back. He could feel his nimble fingers on her sides, making her blush even more. But the cloak covering her back has become a problem for him, and he could not complete his magical finger movements like this. Excusing himself, he tries to remove the cloak a bit, but an embarrassed Leo tells him to stop, since she doesn't want him in particular to see her back. Hurt by her words, he is sad that she doesn't want him to see her back, but later allows him since he was close to crying. Happily removing the cloak, he sees the scar that she was hiding, which she had received when she was running away. Holy, unmoved by it, proudly says that he isn't bothered and would fight anyone who would mock her scars. This makes her happy, and she thanks him for everything, even making him sit down to give him a massage, and it's quite evident how that bit went down with her reputation. Poor Holy. The two complete yet another quest, and after a tiring day, they sit together, but Miss Leo doesn't reply back to Holy's constant questions. To break the awkwardness, he tells her what nice weather they are having, but this question is left unanswered when she slowly rests her head on his shoulder. Embarrassed and a bit shaken, Holy couldn't believe his luck that she is resting her head against his shoulders and is practically asleep. This was the first time for the both of them, and Holy couldn't imagine what to do in this situation. Planning on waking her up, he stops midway when she calls his name in mid-sleep. He assumes that she is dreaming about him and is happy, but alas, she calls him annoying while asleep as well. I guess even in her sleep, she sees Ho Lee as super annoying. Dazed by this wonderful experience, he decides otherwise to wake her up and wishes that the moment lasts a bit longer. Time sweeps by and Leo wakes up from the sleep and is alarmed about what has happened since she fell asleep. She realizes that she had dozed off and used Ho Lee's shoulder as support. This type of thing has never happened to her before, but when she's around him, she just feels so calm. She looks up and sees that he too is dozed off, and is happy that he did not see her in such a vulnerable position. But her plan is foiled when his head takes support on her shoulder, which alarms her, but she lets him off the hook this time, and she enjoys this precious moment with him. With that lovely moment gone, the two proceed onwards but have to stop midway due to the storm. Thunder strikes on the horizon, and Holy notices Leo behaving a bit awkwardly. He asks if she's alright, to which she tells him she's okay. Since that's the case, he proceeds forward, but a huge lightning bolt strikes right in front of them. Leo is scared, which Holy notices. She tells the story of how while training, she was hit by a weak lightning bolt, and though it didn't kill her, it certainly was traumatizing. Seconds later, another lightning bolt strikes right next to them, and Miss Leo's feet give way, not allowing her to walk any further. Understanding that she can't move now, she tells Holy not to tell anyone about this embarrassing moment or her fear, since she wishes to keep it to herself. Holy interjects how he saw her as the perfect knight, but seeing this side of her makes him feel happy, since only he has seen it and no one else. She pulls his cape towards her and makes him sit close, but at the same time orders him not to make any complaints. Until the rain stops, Miss Leo acts very differently to her original hard personality. The storm ceases to exist, and the warm sun shines down on two very energetic people. Miss Leah has taken off her armor, and for the very first time, we get to see her in shorts and a loose sleeveless t-shirt. What a sight for sore eyes. Holy convinces her to let him train with her, no matter how tough and competitive her training may be. She agrees, and says she won't go easy on her routine or stop to make him keep up. He happily agrees not to be a burden. Her facial expressions change into that of a warrior, and she starts warming up by doing 500 push-ups in seconds, followed by 500 sit-ups and then 500 squats. This is all way too much for Ho Lee but he doesn't flinch one bit and does his best to keep up, since he wants to impress her and not fail. Sweat is dripping down her tough body, illuminating her perfect set of abs and big, well, you know what I mean. She wipes the sweat off her forehead and tells Ho Lee they should go for a 10 kilometer run. With his warm up also done, a completely sweat drenched Ho Lee tells her he is ready for the run as well, but is only able to go halfway with her before falling face first on the ground. Miss Theo compliments him for going this far with her without complaining like other people and that he pushed himself to the limit. Getting energy from her words, he tells her he could never complain when he was given the perfect view of her abs, her lower back, and especially her glutes. Guess he must have enjoyed her doing squats, huh? Fuming with embarrassment and anger, Leo cracks her knuckles and says she understands why he was trying so hard all along, 
and since he likes to stare so badly, why not do some hands-on training together? That bit of training was not fun at all for poor Ho Lee. They are back in town, and Ho Lee searches for Miss Leo everywhere since she is late. But when he sees her, she seems to be hiding her face with her hands. Ho Lee asks her why she is behaving this way, and doesn't let him see her face clearly. He makes her move her hands off her forehead, but she turns her head to the other side, avoiding eye contact with him. Using emotional blackmail again, Ho Lee makes a sad face and asks her if she doesn't wish to see his face at all. However, Leo keeps telling him that's not the reason until she couldn't take it anymore and removes her arm from her forehead and shows her bangs which have been cut extremely short. She tells how in the morning she had accidentally cut them short, and to set them she made the blatant mistake of cutting them more, and this freaked her out more since she knew she had to meet Ho Lee in a few minutes. Ho Lee stares at her with a blank face, speechless by the spectacle. This makes Leo feel even more uncomfortable. Completely out of the blue, Ho Lee expresses his inner love for her new haircut and how it is extremely cute and wonderful. Not to mention, he keeps wishing to see more of it and not let her hide her face. The constant compliments made Miss Leo feel so embarrassed that she wanted to die. The following day, Miss Leo has nothing to do nor any quests to complete, so she decides to head back home, but on the way is stopped by a mysterious fortune teller. Seriella is what the fortune teller calls herself and is looking extremely fine with the see-through veil covering her face, the beads around her waist, and shining body. She tries to lure Leo into making her read her fortune, but Leo isn't the least bit interested and makes her way to leave until she stops dead in her tracks. Seriella tells her how there is a certain gentleman in her life who is causing her heart to have trouble and the way that she is now, she may not be able to keep that certain man for long. Now curious, Leo follows the mysterious lady to her shop, called the Mansion of Fortunes, to have her fortune be read out. Leo asks her what she meant by she wouldn't be able to keep a man for long, which makes Seriella smirk that she managed to lure the strongest knight to her place by the words. Leo starts feeling her body becoming weak, and her legs give way. She doesn't understand what is happening until the fortune teller removes the veil around her face and reveals that she is a dark elf. Dark elves want nothing in this world other than to harm humans. The elf smirks and tells Leo that it'll all be over very soon. On the other hand, Ho Lee had seen Leo follow the strange woman into the mansion and followed them. He enters the shop and looks around to find Miss Leo. Ho Lee peeks around the mansion, worried now that she hasn't come out yet. While he peeks around one of the windows, he hears Miss Leo helplessly ask for help and how the lady is killing her. Ho Lee barges in, but is met by a very confusing sight. The fortune teller is massaging the naked, bare back of Miss Leo, who is covered with oil all over her body. The elf tells Ho Lee to wait until she is done with her current customer. Leo tells Ho Lee to not peek at her, otherwise she will kill him. With her body numb and unable to move, the elf takes advantage of the situation and questions Ho Lee if he is her rumored fiancé, to which he tells her that it's not possible since it's a one-sided love and how he had proposed to her. The elf laughs and explained how she used her magic to remove the curses of her body that were left by demons whom she killed. These curses had burdened her. The massage doesn't just remove the curses, but it also makes one look beautiful as well. Nonetheless, Ho Lee thanks her for removing the curses from his friend, and puts his hand out to shake hers, but she is rather amazed that a human wishes to be this intimate with a dark elf. They shake hands, and quick as a bullet, the elf pulls him in for a hug while squeezing his face against her boobs. This makes Ho Lee surprised, but above all enrages Leo the most, since she didn't expect the elf to go this far with him. The elf does give him an option to come to her if Leo ever rejects him, and she will cherish him with all of her heart and body. The two go out in the woods again, and while Leo waits for Ho Lee, who has gone to the lake for water, she gets worried if he is alright since he has been gone for some time. She goes to find him, but finds him by the lake crying. This breaks her heart, and she realizes that she knows nothing about Ho Lee and what problems he may be facing in his life. Coming out of hiding, she tells him he could share anything with her, and they both can talk it out. Ho Lee explains it's not his emotions, but the magical eye drops that are making him cry. The eye drops allow him to see through a person's skin. This enrages the knight, who snatches the eye drops and crumbles it in her palm, telling him how disappointed she feels that she was this concerned for him. Defeating goblins and demons is an everyday thing now for these two. After wiping out a whole batch of them, the two sit together and rest. Ho Lee hands her an energy potion, which will help her replenish her stamina. He has mixed a bit of alcohol with some fruit juice, but that bit is unknown to Leo, who gulps down the potion and ends up being drunk. Who knew she was a light drinker? Nonetheless, now drunk and not in her senses, she starts smoldering Ho Lee with love, and even proceeds to take off her armor. Her underwear is now very evident, and Ho Lee is close to a nosebleed by now. And to make things even more spicy, the drunk Leo sits on his lap, and is laughing without a care in the world. Ho Lee, on the other hand, couldn't decide if he was enjoying this experience, or if he's just scared to hell. Furthermore, he starts to become even more daring and tries to squeeze her butt, but that idea is quick to diminish when he receives a punch from her that sends him flying about a hundred yards away. When she does regain her senses, she finds Ho Lee and is surprised at whoever did such an awful thing. 
Holy's sister Henri finds the sacred sword, aka Miss Leo, and tells her to follow her with a serious look on her face. It feels like she wants a rematch. Leo assumes if she does want a rematch, then she is more than ready to take her on. But that idea is shot down when Henri takes her to a bakery and treats her to sweets and cake, as a payback for lending her the cape when her clothes had torn up during battle. Leo has never tasted sweets in her childhood because of her strict parents, to which Henri gives her a ton of sweets and cakes to make up for the previous years. With each bite, Leo is in tears that she finally gets to taste something so good and so heavenly. The two have finally gotten along with each other. Ho Lee has started to learn wolf transformation magic, but needs a partner to try it on. Leo agrees to let him try it on her and see what the results are. How caring and considerate of her. Using his abominable skills, he casts the magic on Miss Leo. But instead of a werewolf, she just gets cat ears on her head and whiskers as well. Surprised and rather alarmed at what she has transformed into, Leo is pissed at Ho Lee at what he has done. Ho Lee knows he has messed up and even apologizes for this error, but it's too late, and Miss Leo starts talking like a cat and even chases a butterfly frantically. This level of cuteness should be illegal, and poor Ho Lee is in the corner wiping out a nosebleed. Ho Lee undoes the magic, but it backfires and turns him into a cat, and Leo takes advantage of the situation and makes him chase the thing that she holds in her. This is payback for the way he was enjoying it while she was chasing a butterfly. Henri has decided to accompany the two on one of their adventures, but the heat has worn them all out. Ho Lee and Leo stand super close together, as they plan out a route to take to find the demons. This level of intimacy and closeness is unacceptable to his little sister, who watches them with a face that speaks of nothing more but pure jealousy. Henri scolds them for being this close and flirting with each other. This makes Ho Lee tell his little sister to not become so emotional, and that he and Miss Leo do not have such a relationship with each other. This calms her down, but also makes Miss Leo angry and pissed, who says that his behavior is bugging her a bit too much. This leads to the two fighting with each other and arguing like a married couple. Henri breaks up the fight and the two make up with each other as fast as they started fighting. Wow, what chemistry. After their fight and reconciliation, Henri suggests that they should take a break since they have exhausted themselves. She takes them to a lake nearby, and strips down to her undergarments and jumps into the lake. Seeing that the others haven't followed suit, she splashes a water bullet straight on Miss Leo's face. Ho Lee is speechless at what his sister has done. But instead of getting pissed, Miss Leo throws her armor aside and sprays Henri with her own water bullet, and the two girls go head to head in a water bullet fight. Ho Lee happily watches from the background as his two favorite women enjoy their time together. He couldn't have asked for a better view. Our mesmerizing, beautiful, and absolutely irresistible fortune teller Sariella goes out shopping and is happy that she has done quite a decent bit of it as well. However, two cheap and disgusting men stare at her and like greedy, thirsty wolves call out to her. They approach her with horrible intentions and start complimenting her slim body, asking her to play with them a bit. Seriella is in no mood to play, and declines their offer, but they grab her hand and tell her they are famous adventurers and she should spend time with them. Seriella is distressed at this point, but her worries are blown away when she hears someone tell the men to stop right there. It's Ho Lee who has come to the rescue, telling the men to step aside from the lady, otherwise there will be dire consequences. The men attack him, beating the pulp out of poor Ho Lee. Seriella tells them to go away and not hurt him anymore. Out of nowhere, Leo emerges, and with one whiff of her mighty sword and giving them a killer stare, she makes them run like cowards. So much for calling themselves strong adventurers. Nonetheless, Holy gets up and heals Sariella's bruised hand. She looks at him with loving eyes and thinks to herself how he managed to stand up for her, which no one else has ever done. Leo butts in and scolds Holy for the act, and tells him not to get too close with Sariella. Looks like her jealousy instincts are kicking in. Sariella thanks them and offers both Ho Lee and Leo to come to her humble abode someday so she can repay the favor with her new toys. The scorching heat of the sun shines down on poor Ho Lee's sweaty head. He starts to feel dizzy and wobbly. They have faced more demons than he predicted today, and all of that has worn him down. He has surpassed his limit. But Miss Leo wants to do another quest, and Ho Lee doesn't want to be a burden for her, and so he continues until he finally collapses. The light in his eyes slowly diminishes as he sweeps into unconsciousness. He starts thinking that Leo will leave him, until he finally faints. He wakes up a few moments later and is next to a river. Miss Leo is standing near him, with her arms folded, telling him she has cancelled the quest. Ho Lee insists that he can continue further, but Leo scolds him. His face looks hurt and broken. She hates him for pushing himself to the limit and not informing her. He apologizes and tells her he didn't wish to be a burden for her. He then sits and thinks about the fact that Miss Leo had carried him all the way to the river. He starts to smile. He will never forget this one summer day, ever. 
Leo decides to pay a little visit to the fortune teller's place, and repay her the favor she did earlier for relieving her of the curses of demons. Sariella, with a gleeful smile on her face, asks if she can read the brave knight's fortune, which she openly denies, since she doesn't believe in them. The cunning fortune teller knows the knight's weakness, and instead asks if she would be okay if it gives a fortune about hers and Holy's compatibility. This spikes up Leo's interest, and she agrees, saying it won't hurt to try this out. Leo is so predictable. Hence, Seriola starts and immediately calls their compatibility horrible, since from here on out, the two will be together, but their feelings will stagnate until they separate. This is all due to her stubborn attitude, which will bring him nothing but misfortune and injuries. Hurt soars through the impregnable knight's body, and she pretends that the harsh words mean nothing to her. Seriella continues by calling Ho Lee a womanizer, and the fact that he might leave her for some other female who is more feminine than her. This was the last straw, and Leo tells her that Ho Lee is nowhere near what she predicted, and her instincts are stronger than fortune. With a cheeky smirk and a small wink, Seriella comes out clean and tells that she has never gotten a fortune right, and this just means the two lovers are totally inseparable. Leo, blushing from head to toe, is speechless and says she is going home, but the alluring fortune teller uses her extra charm and makes her stay by offering her tea. Ho Lee wakes up after a good nap and gets his energy back. He thanks Miss Leo for putting up the fire and protecting him. He tells her to take rest while he guards the place, which she does sit to rest, but Holy stares at her and notices that something is missing. He wraps his scarf around her, making her get surprised since she didn't expect him to do that, and tells her she can keep it since it's very cold. Miss Leo interjects his persuasion, but he tells her it's his way of saying thank you to her for everything. She keeps the scarf while Ho Lee goes away to do his duties. Miss Leo starts smelling the scarf and could feel herself getting in love with it already, but quickly throws it away to avoid herself from getting too attached. From the corner of her eye, she sees the scarf and knows she can't sleep now. Pulling it back, she wraps it around herself, saying it is rather cold, so an exception has to be made tonight. Ho Lee greets her good morning and hugs her from behind, taking her by surprise. Leo screams, asking who the hell is he? He isn't the Holy she knows. Brushing his hair behind his head and a spicy smirk on his face, Holy caresses her face and tells her she has a beautiful face that he wishes to kiss. Gasping out of surprise and taken aback by his manly personality, Leo can't believe this is the same Holy. He approaches her, coming super close. Leo is flustered by his new personality and can't fight back the urge to kiss him. She closes her eyes and kisses him. In the background, she hears her name being called and wakes up from a beautiful dream. The scarf wrapped around her neck, the scent of Ho Lee, all of this made her want him even more, and because of which, the dream happened. Ho Lee tells her she overslept, maybe it was because she was having such a wonderful dream. Flustered and embarrassed, Leo jumps and runs away. It has started to rain. Ho Lee is annoyed by it and predicts that there may be a thunderstorm later, so maybe they should go to his place since it's nearby. They rush to his house and it seems Henri, his little sister, is not there which just means the two of them are all alone. Leo, pissed, asks him about why he didn't tell her earlier that they may be alone, to which Ho Lee asks her if it's a problem. She declines that it's a problem, but loads of thoughts come into her head, where she assumes he might eat her up or would want a taste of her. Guess she has never been in a man's house. The two set up dishes on the table, and Ho Lee brings in the magical food that he has kept extra effort to cook. The first bite makes Leo moan in utter pleasure. The food is too good to be true. She starts thinking to herself how skilled Ho Lee is. He is attentive, earnest, and can make really great food. Not to mention, he loves her. A thunder strikes in the background, making Leo squeal in fright. The rain starts to pour down like cats and dogs. The weather is too bad for Henri to come back and for Leo to leave, so Ho Lee suggests that she stay the night at his place. Leo changes into Henri's clothes, very small shorts and a cute shirt that is very evident on her well bosom. Nonetheless, she apologizes for staying the night, but gets flustered and so she tries to leave, but the thunderstorm outside only intensifies, making her scared and agreeing to stay the night. The two sleep in different beds, but in the same room, which is something very uncomfortable for Leo, who feels like something might happen between them. Ho Lee, completely oblivious about the situation, tells her their house is so small he and his little sister can sleep together in the same room. Angry, but at the same time hurt, Leo covers herself in the sheets and tells herself that there is no way the two can be lovers. Another thunderstorm happens in the background, making Leo get scared, but Ho Lee, out of nowhere, comes and hugs her from behind. Miss Leo is scared out of her mind. How the hell did she let this happen? And tells him to let her go, but Ho Lee is sleepwalking. He rubs Miss Leo's head and lovingly tells her that she mustn't be scared since her big brother is here. Oh, right, he thinks she is Henri. For some reason, Miss Leo likes the way he rubs her head. Henri manages to come back to her house, despite the storm, and enters saying, I'm home big bro, but what she sees perplexes her. Her big brother, with Miss Leo, on a bed, hugging. Raging, she tells them to move away, and how could they do it in a time like this? She even tells Ho Lee to wake the hell up. 
They set off for their next quest, but Ho Lee doesn't speak at all since he has caught a cold and has lost his voice. He approaches Miss Leo and corners her against the wall, and whispers in her ear that he has caught a cold and can't speak properly. His hoarse voice tingles down her spine. Her heartbeat drums in her chest, and she can't help but love his hoarse masculine voice. She tells herself to calm down, but his hoarse voice keeps making her feel so good and special in her body. The two go into the forest to complete their quest. Leo slices through a bunch of wolves and asks him if he has finished his part. He turns his back, which is when a wolf attacks him from behind. Leo gets in the way and kills it, telling him to be more careful next time. Ho Lee, for some reason, holds Leo, and yet again whispers in her ear that she did wonderfully back there, and thanks her for rescuing him. This gets him an uppercut from her, since she already can't handle his hoarse voice, which makes her feel flustered. She later goes to apologize to a bruised Ho Lee, who has landed far away from their actual location due to the super-powered uppercut. They then decide to communicate via handwritten notes for the rest of the journey. Sariella could not have been more of a sadist than right now, when she decides to invite Ho Lee or Fufu, as per her usual pet name for him, to a woman's only clothing store. Something smells fishy. She comes out of the changing room and shows off her new look, and it's pretty much revealing her whole body. The delicate bra and single sheet of cloth around her waist give off the perfect hourglass look to her delicate, shiny body. She asks Fufu for his opinion on her new look, which makes him just mindlessly remark that it looks wonderful, but it is a little too risque, or risky. We wonder in what sense he means it to be too risky. He does question her for the reason behind her bringing him into a woman's only clothing store, to which she innocently tells him it is to get a man's blunt opinion. He laughs out the fact that he has gone shopping with his sister before, but never in a clothing store like this, but is cut short when he sees Sariella undressing in front of him. He abruptly asks her why she has suddenly started to take off her bra strap, to which she tells him, since he didn't like the outfit that much, she figured it was a good time to change. Our innocent fortune teller is just such a charmer. She calls him back inside, since she has changed and, well, gives him a sight to remember. The bra that has curtained itself around her chest is even more revealing than the last one, not to mention the silk underwear or whatever they're called that she has worn below. With a sad pout, she asks if it's no good, since he doesn't like it that much. He tries to apologize, but is cut off when she turns around and asks him to take off her necklace, which he does after turning bright red around the ears. This is too much for Sariella. With the necklace off, she motions her body closer to Fufu and requests him to take off her bra strap, but he, blushing brighter than ever, declines the offer. She apologizes for pushing it too far, but Ho Lee gives his reason why he declined in the first place. He tells her it isn't because of the request, but because he wishes she would still be a little bit more aware of her beauty. This makes Sariella blush. She did not in the least expect that answer. She does later go into change again and comes out to show clothes that are even more revealing than the last one. This one is just plain see-through. After that, Sariella buys a bunch of clothes from that store. Ho Lee and Leo battle a high-ranked monster in the forest and defeat it easily. Ho Lee rejoices over Leo fearlessly killing the male monster, but she is still on her guard since she knows the female pair would appear from somewhere and attack them, especially since the female one is way stronger than the male. They hear the rustling of the leaves in the forest and Leo rushes to the noise to locate the female monster. She finds the gigantic monster with its mammoth tusks, towering over them, but before she could even draw her sword, someone flashes before their eyes and slices the monster in two. A female with ice-cold eyes and a personality to match tells them to get the hell out of her way. She stands before the slayed monster, sword in hand and ready to attack anyone. Hatred in her eyes, Leo calls her the Berserk Blade, turns around and leaves the premises with Ho Lee at her heels. She later tells Ho Lee that she is Helga Wagner, aka Berserker Blade. People have titled her as the female who was the second most strongest knight in terms of strength, after Leo Cornelia. And despite the fact she isn't her enemy, if Leo stayed any longer in the area, the two would have gotten into a fight. Ho Lee calms her down by telling her that he has always had eyes for her, and that is why he has no clue of who Helga even is. With that said, he goes to a nearby bush to answer the call of nature, and before he could even start, the Berserk Blade walks by him and looks him dead in the eye. Out of all the places to relieve himself, Ho Lee chose the wrong spot. What will be his fate? Ho Lee knows his time has come. The Berserk Blade will not spare him now, especially since she has seen him going to the bathroom. He closes his eyes. Tears cascade down his cheeks. He says a prayer and apologizes to Miss Leo in his heart, for he will not be able to accompany her anymore in future adventures. But to his surprise, Helga touches his shoulder and shields her embarrassed eyes with her hands, asking him to cover himself up. Ho Lee quickly regains his posture and pulls his pants up. He asks her why she is wandering around the area, but her shy nature makes it hard for her to communicate. She does finally tell him that she is bad at talking, and reveals her diehard love for Miss Leo, whom she wishes to spar once in her life. Somewhere in the woods, Miss Leo is confused over why Ho Lee is unreasonably late. Helga and Ho Lee quickly become friends due to their love for Miss Leo. 
Helga couldn't believe her luck that she finally has a friend and holds his hand in utter happiness, even getting closer to him. Ho Lee tells her to ask him any questions related to Miss Leo, since he is more than happy to help. Leo enters the area with the hatred boiling out of her. She demands what the hell are they doing? Her blood is boiling, anger heating her solid shining armor till she can't bear it anymore. Leo demands what the two bastards are even doing. Holding hands in private? Are they on some type of date? Placing her hand on her sword, she says she will kill them both. Her jealousy knows no bounds, and this time she has lost all control. Ho Lee knows if he doesn't do anything fast, Miss Leo will really end up killing both of them. He tells her it's just a misunderstanding, but she turns a deaf ear, which makes Ho Lee do the extreme and hold her sword in his hand, making it bleed, and screaming that he only loves her since she has abs and not Helga, who has no abs. Helga also musters up some powers and confesses her love for Leo, which makes her stop in her tracks and now ask them to explain. The two breathe a sigh of relief, but Helga hugs Ho Lee, thanking him for giving her the courage to speak to Leo. This brings back Leo's anger, and she now isn't in the mood to spare them. Let's lighten things up. Back at Sariella's place, Leo is told to try out underwear and a bra, otherwise her boobs will get saggy. Leo rejects such things since she has never needed them, but due to Sariella's persuasion, she tries out the wrapping on her chest, but they're too big to be held nicely by it. Sariella, being the generous type, even gives her one of her old bras, which are a bit too tight for poor Leo. However, her perfectly shaped body and smooth skin look very attractive in it. Sariella comments that Holy's wedding night with her would be great, which makes Leo quickly eject that claim, but in the rush, her big boobs break the bra's button. After realizing they had no size to fit Leo, they just used wrappings again. The Berserk Blade has an aura of her own. Whenever she treads her mighty feet, everyone around her scrambles in utter fright. She walks in town like any other citizen, but the people around her are scared for their life. But she notices Ho Lee walking just in front of her, which makes her give a very different look, conventional from her usual mean stare. She looks at Ho Lee walking, and for some reason, a toothed smile is emitted from her mouth, and she thinks to herself if it's okay for her to say hello to him. He did tell her that they were friends now, so it's perfectly alright for her to call him out. Helga musters up some courage and squeaks out Ho Lee's name. She didn't expect it to come out like this, and starts assuming that now Ho Lee might hate her for this. Even though she has practiced so many times in the past on how to greet people, yet again, she has failed miserably. But to her surprise, Ho Lee greets her happily and without any signs of annoyance on his face. This makes Helga run and hug him out of pure joy. She hasn't had friends in the past, so Helga has no idea of what personal space even is, and doesn't let go of poor Ho Lee. Ho Lee scrunches his eyes. For some reason, he doesn't recall where he is, and looks around himself and realizes that he is in the city. But what is he even doing here? He hears Miss Leo from behind him ask what he's doing here. But above all, why is he sleeping out like that in the city? He turns around to be awestruck by the beautiful Miss Leo, who is wearing a wonderful silk dress and sandals. She keeps her hair behind her ear, and asks him if today is the day for their date, giving him an embarrassed light smile. Ho Lee could never believe how lucky his stars are right now. Date? Miss Leo in a dress? This is all too good to be true. Miss Leo holds his arm and rubs it against her chest, asking him why he has gotten so riled up. Isn't he her lover? And if so, the two should go have some sweets. Ho Lee keeps pinching himself, wondering if it's all a dream, but he could feel and smell everything like it's real. Miss Leo feeds him a cake happily, and the two have the most wonderful time ever. In the end, she gets closer and closer to him, and puckers up her lips to kiss him. Ho Lee moves back scared, since everything is moving too fast, but Miss Leo shyly tells him to hurry and do it with her, or does he want to spell out what she wants so badly? Back in the real world, Ho Lee is lying down on the ground making kissing noises, and Leo is screaming at him to wake up. A monster known as a succubus has kept him in a trance which only he could break by his willpower. Leo, enraged at the monster, tries to kill him, but if she does, Ho Lee will forever be in the trance. Back in the dream, Ho Lee could hear the shallow voice of Miss Leo telling him to wake up. The succubus explains to Leo that it has disguised itself as Ho Lee's lover in the dream, and is giving him the time of his life. There could be no way he will ever wake up from the dream. Leo doesn't stop in her persistence to wake him up. She doesn't want to lose the one man who made her feel so loved and special. Back in the dream, the fake Leo tries to seduce Ho Lee into kissing her, but he holds her by the shoulders and moves her away, telling her he cannot do it. He has realized that she isn't the real Miss Leo, and he knows it is the succubus who could not defeat the two of them in reality and so has targeted him in his dreams. The succubus is surprised, and lifts up her blouse to show him her abs, trying her very best to convince him that she is the real Leo. 
but nothing can make him believe that it is the real Leo, and he goes off to explain why. He looks at her abs closely, and says that they are good, but not as perfect as Miss Leo's. Not to mention, Leo uses her left foot more, which is her dominant foot, whereas the succubus used the right foot. These indications and the small things made Ho Lee know the difference between the right Leo and the fake one. Speechless and utterly dismantled from her place, the succubus watches Ho Lee wake up from the dream. Leo is relieved that he has woken up, and gives her the opportunity to kill the pesty monster, but is stopped in her tracks by a rather horrified and traumatized succubus, who scolds Leo for not reciprocating Ho Lee's love for her. How could Leo be so thick? She still hasn't reciprocated Ho Lee's undying love for her. The succubus and Leo both start fighting with each other over this issue. We are back in Sariella's mansion, and when you are at her place, there is never a dull moment. She hands Leo a pair of clairvoyant's earplugs. Leo looks at them and tells her she doesn't need them, as they are of no use to her. But we all know how persuasive Sariella is. She sweetly tells Leo that with these special earplugs, she can use them to hear the inner thoughts of Ho Lee, and maybe find out if he really loves her or has bitter intentions instead. Reluctantly, Leo takes the earplugs and walks in town. Her subconscious heavy on her, she doesn't feel good that she will be using them to hear Ho Lee's thoughts with his consent. She sees Ho Lee running towards her, greeting her with a big smile. But along with that, she can also hear his thoughts, which just scream of nothing but love for her. Throughout their conversation, Leo could feel her brain being bombarded with love intentions coming from the inner thoughts of Ho Lee, who continuously thanks God for creating such a wonderful female. All these thoughts are too much to handle, and she screams, that is way too much information. But poor Ho Lee doesn't know the actual story behind this outburst, and simply calls her weird. She later meets Sariella in a cafe, and hands her back the earplugs, her head steaming after the session which she just had. She tells Sariella that it was too much for her to handle, and she would rather not have the earplugs. Ho Lee has come up with another potion, and unlike the previous experience of the Beast Potion, this one will give anyone who drinks it inhuman strength. He asks Leo to drink it, and she agrees, knowing that if it's Ho Lee who is offering it, nothing bad will happen. She drinks the potion, but doesn't feel anything happening to her. But when she takes her first step, the ground beneath her breaks. Ho Lee has realized that he has made a grave mistake. If he had given the potion to any ordinary citizen, they would get superhuman strength but giving it to Miss Leo, who already has superhuman strength, she now has unimaginable powers. Leo takes another step, and the cliff almost breaks. Holy warns her to stay still, otherwise they will end up falling down the cliff to their death. He suggests that she should jump towards him and let him carry her to safety, for if she doesn't move, then nothing will happen. The potion's effect itself will last 10 minutes, but since the cliff is on the verge of breaking, Miss Leo should hurry and jump towards him. She obliges, but in midair, realizes that jumping towards Ho Lee like this would mean him catching her, and their chests colliding against each other. The two collide, and Ho Lee hugs her tightly, making her squeal in embarrassment to not hold her so tightly. The ground breaks below them, but luckily, the two escape without even being scratched at all. Berserk has approached Ho Lee for some motivation to talk to the Sacred Sword. She wishes to become friendlier with Miss Leo, but doesn't have the courage to talk to her straightforwardly. Plus, she gets nervous. She tells Ho Lee of how she did plan to talk to her the next day, but that night she was so nervous she couldn't even catch a blink of sleep. Ho Lee could notice how scary her eyes look right now, since she has been sleep deprived. He slaps his cheeks lightly and tells her to do the same if she ever feels nervous. This may pull her out of her nervousness. Helga agrees happily, and even agrees that it looks super cool too. The two approach Leo, who has crossed her arms around her chest and looks menacingly at them, demanding Ho Lee what he is even doing with Helga. Ho Lee breaks the ice and tells Leo that Helga is nervous, because of which she can't ask Leo if they can be friends. Leo says that she will only agree once she listens from Helga's own mouth that she would like to be friends. Ho Lee motions her to speak, and the first thing she does is slap her cheeks with such intensity that Ho Lee falls on his butt. Leo grabs her sword and demands what the hell she's even doing. Blood pouring down her mouth and tears forming in her eyes, Helga opens up by saying she was nervous and tried to wake herself up, but the force was too much. Ho Lee comes to the rescue and heals Helga by holding her face in his hands and reassuring her that everything will be alright. Once healed, he tells her to now try and talk to Miss Leo, but when he turns around, he is met by the sight of a jealous knight, who didn't one bit like Ho Lee touching Helga's face, even if it was to heal her. Ho Lee asks her what's wrong and gets a stingy reply. I'll cut you, slash, stab, murder, and exterminate you to death. He should better know how to behave in front of Miss Leo. Her jealous personality has no control over her. The two have been fighting non-stop for hours now until midnight. If they continue, then even Miss Leo will be at her limit in two days. The band of goblins haven't noticed them, so they decide to rest a bit until they get back to fighting. Leo accidentally sits on Ho Lee's magic staff and quickly stands up, apologizing for sitting on it and hoping that it hasn't broken. But he reassures her that it is made out of magic wood, and nothing can break it no matter what amount of strength they may use. He does comment that the staff makes the scenery look bigger. Guess the late night strain makes him make some pointless comments. He tells her to sit on it again and again. 
His desires are acting up and he's enjoying quite the time, seeing Miss Leo sit down and stand up again. Leo herself dismisses his pervy desires, and instead says she rather enjoys this exercise since it feels like a massage on her body. Ho Lee dares her to use her full strength on the staff and it will still not break. Taking his dare into mind, she uses all of her strength to jump on the staff and ends up breaking the huge boulder that it was placed on, but the staff itself doesn't break. All that fun really did make them feel fresher, but it certainly also made the goblins find their location and attack them in huge numbers. This made them realize to be mindful of the dumb things they do while messing around late in the night. It is time for more adventures. Ho Lee and Leo explore the forest, but he notices that her shoulder is bruised, so he offers to heal it. Being the tough shell that she is, Leo rejects his offer, but he insists until he uses his lovely charm to tell her that it's normal for people to overcare for their loved ones and that she should allow him. Taken aback, she obliges and lets him heal her. All these lovey-dovey acts cannot be tolerated by Ho Lee's sister, Henri, who has been tagging along with them for quite a while for this adventure. She tells Ho Lee to cut out the act and stop flirting. The two aren't even dating each other, so it makes perfect sense if they stop. The sacred sword sighs. She remembers that Henri is tagging along with them too. Henri reaches in and holds her big brother's arm, squeezing her plum chest against it and tells him to not talk to Leo for a while since he has been ignoring her. Leo agrees to not talk for a while, making Ho Lee follow suit. After that, Ho Lee starts paying more attention to Henri and notices that she has cut her hair a bit short. She is happy that her brother is loving her again and starts acting childish. But Henri notices from the corner of her eye that Leo is boiling with anger. Her glares speak of utter death for Henri. Ho Lee even places his hand around Henri's shoulder, which just makes matters worse. The storm around Leo's head starts throwing lightning and thunder. Henri has started to feel uneasy. She has never seen the sight of Leo. She tries to tell her brother what the issue is, but notices that Leo has drawn her sword and throws it towards them. Lucky for her, the sword pierces the throat of a goblin that was approaching them. Henri thanks Leo for saving them, but she, with blood around her cheeks and a menacing look on her face, tells her it's completely fine. She just felt like slicing into something. Henri has gotten the idea and tells Ho Lee he can talk to Leo all he wants now. Someone has learned their lesson. Helga has approached Ho Lee once again for advice on how to talk to the sacred sword. God, can't she get over her already? She apologizes to Ho Lee for the misunderstanding when she had slapped her cheeks, and wants to get another chance with Leo. Ho Lee suggests that they can get some advice from a reliable source for a new outfit, which can make things a billion times better for her. Ho Lee's reliable source is Sariella. Of all the people in the world, he has chosen Sariella. Nonetheless, Sariella is surprised that the Sacred Sword is with him, but at once becomes the caring mother type once she hears the entire story. She drags her inside her mansion to give her a whole makeover. They come back a few minutes later with a completely transformed Helga, who isn't at all like herself. Wearing fishnet leggings, a graceful frock, and hair tied up in a ponytail, Helga looks so beautiful. Helga feels very uneasy, since this is the first time she has ever worn such clothes, but she has started to feel like a completely different person. A strong gust of wind blows towards them, lifting Helga's skirt up, revealing her fishnet leggings and mature underwear. Eyes watering up, Helga is close to crying, since she feels like she may not ever be married now after this event. Ho Lee calms her down and tells her they should go to a nearby sweet shop for some treats. The transformation surely calls for a celebration. Last time, due to her newly obtained lingerie being revealed to her friend, Ho Lee took Helga out for treats to make her not cry over it. They come back and Ho Lee asks if he can be excused since he needs to answer the call of nature. This brings back bitter memories to her when she had first seen Ho Lee take a quick washroom break in the forest. Ho Lee runs off to get himself free, otherwise things would get quite messy. With Ho Lee gone, the two goons who had tried to harass Sariella in the previous chapters have come back to harass Helga. They approach her, calling her style nice, and why doesn't she come play with them? But she ignores them since she doesn't know that they are talking to her. She declines their offer since she is waiting for a friend, but they persist. Ho Lee comes back from his little break and sees the pathetic perverts and tells them to back off. They look at him and make their way to beat him up, but Ho Lee excuses himself once again for another washroom break. Helga whips out her sword and with anger in her eyes, tells the men to scram and not mess with her friends, otherwise things will get messy. Ho Lee comes back and thanks her for helping him, but other people have recognized this pretty girl to be Helga and have started gossiping, making her feel uneasy. He calms her down and tells her to be confident and everyone will stop gossiping, which she does. Soon, the townspeople had a new opinion about Helga. A bunch of slimes have attacked poor Ho Lee, who is lying helpless on the ground. Leo is pissed that he is easily defeated by a bunch of slimes that are the weakest monsters to ever exist. She kills off the few slimes and asks Ho Lee why he is performing so badly right now. To which Ho Lee has no answer, other than why has she covered her abs with a piece of cloth. She tells him since it's so cold, she decided to cover up. Ho Lee begs her to take it off, since it's his source of motivation to fight, but she doesn't agree with him. 
After the fight, Leo takes it off, which sends an urge of power into Ho Lee and tells her to rest while he handles everything. Out of the blue, a demon appears and challenges Leo to a duel. She calls herself the Magnificent Ermgard, the one destined to be the next demon lord. Leo doesn't remember her and asks who she is, which gets her pissed off. She then questions Leo who the pathetic man is, which makes Leo defend her lover and start bragging about his qualities. Ermgard tells Leo to shut her chatterbox and produces a supersonic ball that the two dodge. Looks like a battle of the century will be happening. Will this new demon be the one to defeat Leo? Ho Lee watches the fight go down between Ermgard and Leo, and to be honest, it doesn't look like Leo can counter her attack successfully. This makes Ho Lee a little tense for his lover, since the demon's power is ridiculous. It seems like Leo finally has an opponent that can match her. Ermgard and Leo share a little chat between their great face-off, and it turns out the two are not clashing for the first time. The demon wants her to stop playing coy and remember who she is, since she is the only demon who possesses this amount of power. Looks like someone's ego has taken a hit. Leo still can't push her memory that far, and doesn't know why it's so important for Ermgard to be remembered. It seems that the demon just wants some attention, which is a little annoying. The demon is too angry, and starts channeling all her power into a single attack, as a punishment. This is when a boy comes there, looking for Ermgard and professes his love for her on his knees, with flowers in hand. Well, this certainly escalated quickly. It's a bit weird that someone is proposing to Ermgard in the middle of the fight, but he is just an adventurous hero who wants a moment to confess to the woman who has been on his mind non-stop. Ermgard does not look happy with this proposal, since she has already rejected this guy, but he is not one to give up, is he? The demon obviously hates inferior beings like humans, and threatens him to leave or she will turn him into cinders. However, the most powerful attack looks like a heart now. Leo figures that she is just hiding her true feelings. Ermgard is left speechless and decides to just bounce and go home. But, of course, this self-proclaimed hero is not going to let her leave so soon. A confused Leo has to interrupt and ask about their history at this point, to which he replies that he met her during a quest he was completing a while ago and got obsessed with her beauty. Ho Lee has to talk some sense into the guy, advising him that he should read the mood a little more and not go around confessing to anyone. Leo looks terrifying after hearing his little speech, though. Ermgard flies away, which is understandable, as the situation was just getting more awkward. But her familiar is definitely not proud of her for making this move, as she was just about to defeat the Sacred Sword. She can't take so many shocks in one day, and doesn't appreciate that her familiar is going out of line on her. Obviously, her familiar can't take the hint, and wants to know if her mistress is truly interested in the human who confessed to her. There's no way a human and a demon can be together anyways, since the difference between the two races is too large. This little truth hits her right in the heart, however, and suddenly she starts looking depressed. She keeps flying with her mind somewhere else, and obviously ends up hitting a rock. She should really start watching where she goes, but this little hurdle teaches her nothing. Her new mission is to erase that human and the sacred sword from existence now. It's not a sin to have ambitions and dreams, right? Leo is back to a demon-free day, when a cat comes up to her, making her jump in fright. Where did this thing even come from? It turns out that Ho Lee has conjured up this cat, Kiyu chan who is a familiar. Well, it's definitely the first time she has seen this cat, and Ho Lee can't stop petting her. He obviously likes Kiyu chan way too much, as he thinks that she is well-behaved and cute. Additionally, she can heal others when summoned. Sometimes. This cat is obviously really talented. However, Leo does not look too thrilled about her, while Ho Lee just wants them to be friends. Kayu chan does not seem to like the idea either, as she starts talking to Leo and even calls her a skank. Ho Lee can't hear the cat speak as she is speaking directly to Leo's mind. The cat is not ready to accept someone else in her master's life, and it looks like she is really jealous of Leo. Kiyu chan suddenly turns really frightening, and challenges Leo to a fight while the loser has to cut any contact with Ho Lee. Well, the stakes are high, but Leo has no option but to accept this challenge. Of course, she lets Ho Lee know that his familiar has just challenged her. He decides to respect his child's wishes as a parent, and requests Leo to have a fair fight with her. Why does she always end up in such situations? Of course, Kyu chan has evil motives behind this fight, since she set this trap for Leo. Even though she already knows the difference between their power levels, she looks way too happy about losing, though. Her plan is to act extremely injured the moment Leo lays a hand on her, which will surely cause a divide in her relationship with Ho Lee. Who knew cats could be so evil? She starts off by jumping on Leo, wanting to make her taste the power of her claws since she can't attack her. Ho Lee still thinks Kyu chan is too cute for trying to attack her with all she's got. However, Leo doesn't share his feelings. She knows that this cat has high intelligence but has no actual capabilities to fight. Ho Lee also seconds her opinion because she is more like a house pet and is not particularly useful on quests either. A creature with way too many eyes on its body appears in front of them, making Ho Lee a bit too excited. He can't believe that Leo has managed to summon one of the most powerful demons, Belphegor. He is thrilled at this new development, even though this demon is not cute at all. 
Belphegor tries to mutter something, but all Leo can hear is gibberish. Is she supposed to make sense of this? Holy obviously wants her to try and communicate with the demon, as she summoned it. Moreover, he is turning out to be a bit of a demon geek as he knows that Belphegors have high intelligence, and it mutters mean that he is trying to speak to her. Soon enough, the demon throws up all over the floor, which is quite disgusting. Holy, the geek, informs her that it's not just vomit, but death breath, and its powers can instantly kill any lower monster if they just breathe it. Additionally, he tells Leo that the demon is a female, which is indicated by the short horn it has. Now she can have another female companion that she can relate to. Of course, she can't sympathize with this weird demon just because it's female. This is when Belphegor starts talking to her, and this time she can actually understand it. At least, this demon has manners and introduces herself, and it even has a nickname, Belly. Belly is absolutely thrilled that a person like Leo has the magical ability to summon her, and even wants to make a contract with her. The poor thing believes that it's impossible though, since her previous summoners told her that they hated how she looks. To be honest, she does look really scary, but she doesn't deserve to be rejected. Leo feels the same after introducing herself, and tells her that she is not the type of human to judge someone based on how they look. She is ready for a contract, and Holy informs her that each conjured familiar has a core that needs to be contacted. A contract isn't possible without touching the core though. It turns out, the core is inside of the throat for a Belphegor, and she has to reach down and touch it to seal the deal. Of course, this makes Leo all grossed out, and she asks for the contract to be put on hold. Helga is out shopping with Sariella, and is trying on new clothes that look really cute on her, even though they are a bit revealing. She is happy that Sariella has come with her on this little shopping trip, and it looks like the amount of friends she has is increasing. Helga wants new clothes since she gained some self-confidence after trying on different clothes a while back. Those were obviously Sariella's clothes, which is why it's time that she gets something for herself. This is when Sariella brings out a pure white dress that Holy praised Helga in, and she is sure that he will call her cute the next time he sees her in it. This makes Helga really embarrassed, and she denies that she is not here to buy clothes for such a dirty reason. She can be really adorably innocent sometimes, can't she? Sariella obviously can't control her teasing habit and wants Helga to show her six-pack and extremely fit body to Holy, just so they can see his reaction. Holy looks extremely confused about Ermgard wanting to meet him so suddenly, but the demon looks more upset about a lesser being like him calling her by just her name. Of course, she has a reason behind wanting to talk to filth like Holy, so she asks him about the whereabouts of the sacred sword, threatening to kill him if he doesn't answer quickly. She definitely missed a lesson or two on patience. Leo looks too scared by the threats, and tells her that he hasn't brought Leo today since he is here to find herbs for potions. He has no choice but to listen to her demands, and she starts off by asking if he thinks it's possible for true love to happen between a human and a demon. This makes Holy wonder if this weird question has anything to do with the adventurous hero that confessed to her a while back. He's obviously a romantic, who tells her that if the two people involved love each other, then it shouldn't matter what being or race they are. His answer surely makes her happy, and she starts asking about how a marriage ceremony should be conducted and how to greet her in-laws. She's already planning a marriage, and kids. She already expected the Sacred Sword's partner to have a way with words. However, this is when her familiar makes an appearance blowing her cover, saying that she doesn't have any friends and there can be no one she knows who wants to be with a human. Ermgard is obviously too embarrassed by this revelation, and flies home telling Holy to forget about this conversation. But it turns out, she will ask Holy for advice from time to time. A few girls go crazy over Alfred Schultz, a man born into one of the five most prestigious families in the country as he walks by. His beautiful face is obviously really noticeable, and even his little wink is enough to make everyone swoon. It doesn't matter if they are a human or even a dog. He really is a sinful man, making all these women faint just by taking a stroll around the city, and he doesn't believe that there is any woman out there who can resist his charms. That is when he spots Leo, who has finally let her guard down, and was recently seen with a man. Well, of course, that man is not good-looking in the slightest, according to him. He promises to himself that Leo is going to be his, even though she isn't his type. However, he wants control over the country's strongest warrior, and he can just use her to get anyone who tries to oppose him. He finally goes over and introduces himself, and as expected, she doesn't faint the moment she sees him. It is quite impressive, but he shakes her hand to see how mentally strong she is after seeing her reaction with direct contact. His plans don't work out as she bends his finger, since she assumes that people want to challenge her whenever they put their hands in front of her. Well, she is certainly too battle crazy. He invites her for a cup of tea with him, because he doesn't understand why she isn't flustered by him due to such close contact. Something is definitely wrong with this woman. She immediately declines his offer, which confuses him even more. After all, how could she deny an invitation from a handsome man? However, Leo doesn't think he is handsome, and continues to describe Ho Lee as the one she truly considers a handsome man. She really is oddly specific with her taste. 
A rejection like this is not going to stop Alfred though, and he uses Charm, a sweet smelling perfume that targets the person of the opposite sex. Well, he has compared and starts confessing his feelings for her with flowers in his hand. He doesn't think that she can deny this combo attack of flowers and perfume. Alfred's Charm perfume is too sweet for Leo's taste, and she starts losing her mind. She likes his flowers though, but not because he has given them to her. These flowers bring back the memories of when Ho Lee confessed to her. Alfred can't believe that she is still thinking about the ugly guy after all of his efforts. He even goes as far to advise her that the other flowers aren't that special, and she should probably return them. However, none of his charming words have any effect on her, as she tells him to go take a bath as he smells awful. She thinks that everyone around him has fainted because of this horrible smell. Leo turns around to go back, saying her goodbyes, when Alfred decides to use everything to make her fall for him. He still has his heart-throbbing wink trick up his sleeve and stops her from leaving. Of course, this trick only makes Leo think that some dust has hurt his eyes. His enchanting dance looks like a mosquito is skittering around. Moreover, his dazzling voice makes her want to rip out his vocal cords. This makes him really angry, and he asks her what's so special about that ugly guy she likes since he is the most handsome man in the country. She takes her sword out at this point, which makes him so scared that he can't even speak. Leo didn't think that Ho Lee would have stopped confessing his feelings if she did this to him, and this is the difference between them. All the other girls think that Alfred is too pathetic after witnessing this scene, and this is surely the first time he has faced this much humiliation. He makes it his mission now to have Leo and her damn smile all for himself one day. Leo is walking away, totally aware of what Alfred was trying to do with his fake and obnoxious confession. It was totally different to the time Ho Lee confessed to her, and it felt like he really loved her for who she is. She starts getting self-conscious about it, but cools down soon enough. She had known about his feelings when they met, and his confession to her was not fake at all. This must really mean that Ho Lee loves her, which makes her head spin, turning her expression quite disgusting. She hopes to be fine by the next day to meet Ho Lee, though. However, this is when Ho Lee comes running up to her, really glad that they are seeing each other on their day off. Well, his timing truly is horrible, isn't it? Henri is dragging Ho Lee and Leo to another quest when she observes that the two of them haven't been talking to each other for a while. It looks like they've had a fight or something. Leo first tries to deny her accusations, but eventually reveals that they couldn't come to terms on what to eat for dinner for today's quest. Well, it doesn't really look like a big deal until Ho Lee and Leo start arguing on the spot. Ho Lee believes that Leo eats too much meat, which is not good for her health. However, Leo doesn't think he has any right to question her food choices or worry about her health. They're even about to start a physical fight when Henri stops them. This is when Ho Lee spots the necklace that she is wearing and immediately knows that it's the one he got her for her birthday. This makes him feel really happy and the two apologize to each other instantly. Obviously, Henri gets too angry to see this since both of them were arguing over dinner and are getting along just fine the next second. This looks like a comedy sketch to her, and she wants an apology from both of them. Ho Lee and Leo are back from the quest, all happy about the quest being so easy. Suddenly, a stunning girl appears in front of them, who speaks a little weirdly. The girl knows Leo. However, Leo denies knowing her and starts to leave. The girl begins following her, complaining about being ignored until she starts crying. Leo has to stop at this point, and reveal that this annoying person is an Imperial Knight named Fleur Baranova. Imperial Knights are the most elite knights that guard the palace, and Leo was a part of them until she got bored and left. Fleur thinks that she is too cute, but Leo calls her a massive idiot. However, it turns out that she isn't here for Leo, but for Ho Lee himself. She doesn't know why Leo wants to have a party with a boring man like Ho Lee to go on quests, but not her. She clearly has some delusions about her relationship with Leo, who only wants to get rid of her. Fleur challenges Ho Lee to a fight, wanting to know why Leo wants to team up with the likeness of him. She really wants to see his true powers now, and it looks like nothing can stop her since she keeps bragging about her parents being loaded. Ho Lee hesitates a bit at Fleur's open challenge, since it is bothersome to suddenly fight. This gives Fleur a chance to mock him by questioning Leo's taste in men. Ho Lee is not going to stand by and listen to insults against Leo, even though he is okay with her badmouthing him. Now he looks ready for a real fight. The fight ends as soon as it starts, as Ho Lee gets defeated almost instantly. Of course, Fleur thinks Ho Lee is pathetic after this little interaction, but she expected more from the Sacred Swords member. She personally doesn't like weaker men, and heaven knows how a fool like Ho Lee even got close to Leo. Ho Lee is still lying down on his back, wishing to be stronger so he doesn't look so pathetic. This is when he hears a voice telling him that it can lend him its power. Ho Lee is so confused because there's no one around. Has his guardian angel decided to be invisible today? The voice tells him to extend his hand to get what he wants, but he ends up touching Leo's belly who is standing right in front of him. Leo does not like to be touched this way until suddenly she sees Ho Lee standing up in the air with an angry look. It looks like he got that power after all. Ho Lee charges at her with his power, making Fleur shocked at the large magical beast. He is about to attack her with his powers when she starts begging him not to hurt her as she doesn't want to die. Her previous confidence is completely gone, and she surrenders. 
Ho Lee lights up the entire town with his power, but he is still delirious from the after effect at the end. He looks really grateful that his true powers were just awakened. Leo smiles proudly, telling Fleur to admit that her guy is leagues above the other guys. Fleur does look really amazed, and ends up asking Ho Lee to make her his bride. Or slave. Anything works for her at this point. Leo does not appreciate her request, but Ho Lee can say nothing but abs. His reply is not going to satisfy Leo or Fleur. Fleur arrives to meet Ho Lee the next day, who doesn't get why she is being so nice to him. He has to ask her plans, to which she replies that she just wants to take a stroll around town. Of course, Ho Lee means to ask exactly what she is doing at his house at the break of dawn. Stalker alert, love has made Fleur blind, and she has ended up in his house before she even knew it. Her criminal-like behavior is a little for Ho Lee, until she gets scarier and takes out a collar with a chain around it. She begins to strip, and it looks like she wants him to put the collar on her neck. Was she serious about being his slave? Ho Lee just wants her to stop with her craziness since his little sister is sleeping right there, and all of this mess can cause some serious misunderstandings. Fleur is not ready to take a hint, so Ho Lee has to tell her that Leo is the only one for him, which is why they can't be together. Fleur doesn't mind that he is in love with Leo, because it is so much better to snatch up someone from a serious relationship. Poor Ho Lee just wants a break, right now. Fleur is quite self-aware that she can be annoying sometimes, but still wants Ho Lee to think about giving them a chance or she'll have to endure her thoughts of ending it all. Ho Lee finally takes a stand, offering his friendship to her, but nothing more than that. This new arrangement might work for Fleur, and it's time that they put some boundaries between them. However, she continues to strip and wants to know how compatible their bodies are. This is definitely not what a normal person would do. Henri has to step in and punch the perverted Fleur right in the face to save her brother, and Ho Lee could not have been more relieved. Leo and Ho Lee are out on a quest together, and they reach the place where the demon they're after is. It's a little odd since the demon is not supposedly that aggressive, but the request said that they are unpleasant to look at. Speak of the devil, these demons arrive right in front of them, but they are right in the middle of having relations. They don't stop even after looking at the pair, which makes them a little uncomfortable. Leo is too angry, watching them being so shameless and wants to kill them right away. But one of them starts growing a tentacle, according to Ho Lee. Innocent Ho Lee doesn't know that it's not a tentacle, and these demons are just doing all the hardcore stuff. This picture burns into Leo's mind, and her brain explodes. Now Ho Lee has to take matters into his own hands, and kill the demons until one of them asks him not to kill them. Leo obviously can't take it anymore, and uses a groundbreaking slash of her sword to make them stop. The stunt finally brings the demons back to their senses, who only want their lives to be spared now. Leo is now in a state of confusion, and even her nose starts bleeding. She should really get her nose checked. Leo is waiting for Ho Lee in town, and is growing a little impatient as he has never been this late. Has something happened to him? Thankfully, he is safe and arrives apologizing for being so late. He sure took his time, but Leo only finds a girl standing in front of her. Turns out, Ho Lee has accidentally become a girl after Henri asked him to make a beauty potion for her, which turned out to be a failure. Well, he certainly is a cute girl. He tasted the potion, and it seems like the effect was a little too strong. Next thing he knows is that he turned into a girl. He believes that the effect will go away after some time, though. However, it's odd for him that there were a lot of men trying to talk to him on his way, but he dealt with them. Well, girl Ho Lee is certainly popular. Leo's heart starts pounding after looking at him like this, since his original baby face has turned him into a stunning woman. She has to remind herself that he is the same abs fetishist Ho Lee, until he trips and falls on her and Leo's hand goes straight to his breasts. This situation is quite intense, and Leo has to tell him to not let other people close besides her, until he becomes a man again. Even though she doesn't really understand why, Leo is feeling a strong desire to protect Ho Lee like a jealous boyfriend. Ho Lee is still a girl, and is going with Leo on a quest to defeat some goblins. Even though he thinks that it is an easy quest, they should really not let their guard down. He's getting used to his new body, while Leo just wants to hug him as he is too cute. Also, how did he turn into such a bubbly country girl who was also built? Leo needs to get her thoughts in order when she hears from Ho Lee that there is a monster behind her. Leo turns around and cuts the monster down quickly, but it ends up biting Leo. His body starts feeling hot for some reason, and he realizes that it's because of that monster which is a desire mushroom. He starts stripping because of all the warmth, and comes closer to Leo professing his love for her. Soon enough, he turns into the man version of Ho Lee with his shirt button still open. Leo can't control her extreme sigh with Ho Lee being normal again, which leaves him a bit confused. The sigh sounds like she really wanted to get to the good part, but couldn't. Ho Lee has taken Helga along for a quest today, since there's been more high-tier monsters recently, and her company makes him calm. Helga looks unsure about it though, as she believes that he will get annoyed by questing with her. Additionally, Leo is training by herself, so he is searching for ingredients for more potions. This relaxes Helga a bit, getting her excited about questing with a friend for the first time. She even takes the opportunity to say his name, as she usually fights by herself. 
This is more of a sad reason than anyone would think though, but she is at least happy right now. She even figures out things they can do to become even friendlier, like giving each other high fives after defeating an enemy or striking a nice pose after she beats an enemy by herself. This sad image makes Holy invite her to join them for other quests as well, whenever she has time. He even promises to join her the next time she goes questing. Helga starts crying happy tears after listening to his sweet invitation, which is a pretty intense reaction. Suddenly, they hear a thumping roar of a troll, which is a high tier monster. Helga smiles at the monster, does a cute cheer, which is unbelievable for Ho Lee, since this is definitely not the right way to face monsters. However, this criticism doesn't last long as Helga cuts down the monster in a matter of seconds. This was surely an amazing one-man act, but she wants to believe that they did it as a team and Ho Lee goes along with it. Of course, she hasn't forgotten her plan and high-fives Ho Lee, who acknowledges her weirdness but doesn't mind as long as she's happy. It seems like Ho Lee found the blood explosion from the troll a bit flashy, and they are both covered with blood. This much blood from a high-tier monster is no surprise, but he will feel gross if they continued with its blood on themselves. Thankfully, he remembers that there is a watering hole nearby where they can shower. They decide to take turns to clean themselves up, and Helga goes first while he keeps watch. Helga is having a nice little shower, and has finally cooled her head. However, she feels really embarrassed for doing all the weird things, especially asking for a high five from Ho Lee. She thinks that Ho Lee will start hating her if she keeps on annoying him, until she hears his screams. She runs to see what's up and runs to help Ho Lee, who is stuck in the middle of trolls. Well, they must be the last troll's friends, but Helga isn't ready to let them hurt Ho Lee. This is when she realizes that she has forgotten to wear her clothes. Ho Lee spots Helga at the perfect moment and is thankful that she is here, but then he spots her abs and can't stop looking at them. Helga is really embarrassed now and tackles him to make him go to sleep. She starts fighting one troll after another while stunning Ho Lee every time he tries to wake up. After she is done and has put on some clothes, Ho Lee wakes up as well. He doesn't remember much of what happened except that he saw something amazing. He really is too obsessed with abs, isn't he? Even though Helga wants to apologize for knocking him out continuously, she decides that it's best if she keeps quiet about it. Ho Lee appreciates Helga for doing a good job today on their way back since he got the herbs he was looking for. She still wants to go questing together, to which Ho Lee agrees and they call it a day. Soon, Ho Lee meets Leo who is actually supposed to be busy today and tells her about his quest with Helga. Leo is not taking this new information well, and her face has instantly turned green with anger. Of course, she doesn't want to accept that she is angry, and instead says that she wants to have a calm chat. Leo tells him that she doesn't mind if she goes questing with someone else, but she thinks that the Berserk Blade is trying hard to get under her skin. Then she turns to Helga, asking her goals behind getting close to Ho Lee, while he tries to control the situation. Poor Helga thinks that it's his fault that his two favorite people are fighting. She can't contain her emotions either, and bursts out saying that Ho Lee is her friend, which makes him glad that she has finally built up some courage. Furthermore, Helga reveals that she wants to invite him to go questing with her as well, because it's fun talking to him and he gives her high fives. Ho Lee has to stop her at this point, as she sounds like she wants to go out with him. Helga is embarrassed and denies it, when they hear Leo calling out for Ho Lee. She looks really mad, and wants Ho Lee to give her a high five since she has never given her one. Ho Lee tries to explain the situation to her, but it doesn't look like she wants anything but the high five. Soon after fighting for their lives, the two are able to clear up the misunderstanding. Ermgard has made a reappearance in front of Leo once more, and today is the day that she finally wants to defeat the Sacred Sword. Of course, the guy from before shows up once more looking for Ermgard. Apparently, he has the instinct to where she is when it comes to her. Speaking from experience, Leo knows that this is the part where she goes beat red, starts flying, and runs away, so she sees her sword. However, Ermgard is not going to let her give up this easily. She turns to her stalker, telling him that just professing his love and giving lip service shows nothing but insecurity. Plus, there is a barrier between humans and demons that does not allow the two races to love each other anyway. Therefore, she does not need his half-hearted attempts to woo her, and wants him to do something about casting away his ties with humankind. She has obviously given it a lot of thought. Suddenly, her lover turns to her with horns on his head, revealing that he had taken it upon himself to become a demon long ago. It turns out that using magic runes and eating meat from demons can turn a human into one too. He professes his love once again, passionately, and Ermgard reveals that she loves him too. However, due to all this mental overload, she flies away saying that she needs some time to think. The lover is left with Leo and Ho Lee once again, who understands how idiotic they look after this foolish couple has flaunted their feelings in public. Ho Lee is out on a quest, and Henri comes home to find a treasure chest in her living room, which might be a surprise from her brother. She opens the chest to find Fleur with ribbons on her almost naked body, who has come here in the name of love. Henri starts punching this crazy woman once again, who tries to pounce on her brother. Fleur stands up to give a lecture on violence to Henri, telling her that she is Ho Lee's slave of love, leaving Henri too shocked to speak. Finally, Henri threatens her to stop this madness or she will call the palace guards. This leads to Fleur informing her that she is an Imperial Knight who is at the top of Palace Guards, which is why they can never touch her. Of course, Henri thinks that the world is beyond saving, taking manners into her own hands, and attacks Fleur. 
However, she is not stupid enough to get hit with the same attack twice. This makes Henri kick her to protect her brother's chastity. This is when Ho Lee appears and finds Fleur on Henri's shoulders, which means that his sister is really beating her up. Fleur agrees that she is really strong, and Henri returns the favor by acknowledging her strength as well, since she made her use her special move. It seems like after fighting and colliding with each other, both the girls slightly understand each other more. Leo has gone to Sariella, a bit mad about Ho Lee not telling her that it's his birthday tomorrow. Sariella seems glad that there is some progress between the two, as the slow burn romance was getting a bit boring. It turns out that she is here to get the perfect present for him, and brings out a sword as a potential option for a gift. This sword is the one she had as a kid, and used to subdue some monsters. The story is a bit too much for Sariella to bear, who finds the idea of giving something that has her blood all over it for a birthday gift quite dumb. She wants to put a stop to this, and starts showing her potential options for gifts since Leo is obviously immature and has no grasp of subtleties of relationships. Leo isn't ready to listen to her lecture, until she tells her that Dark Elves live for a long time, and she is 100 years old. She gives her an intense stare, telling her to listen to her wise words and not give these foolish gifts to Ho Lee. Thankfully, Leo agrees to hear her out of fear. Ho Lee is worried about Leo's health, but continues to tell her that the target they need to take down is a mischief mole, which is not that big of a threat. However, it can pull anyone down on the ground if they are careless. It looks like Leo does become careless, and Ho Lee has to eventually pull her up from the ground. It looks like her mind is not in the quest today. Leo denies his questions, pretending to be her same old regular self. Ho Lee doesn't believe her since she really does look unstable. The reason behind her carelessness is revealed, since she is just nervous about giving her gift to Leo. She dangles a necklace in front of him, which looks the same as the one he gifted her. She starts rambling about Sariella's advice, making sure that he knows it wasn't her intention to get him a matching accessory. She doesn't really want to accept her feelings at all. Of course, Ho Lee is really happy with this gift until they realize they forgot about the mole. Leo gets pulled into the ground once again, which is indication that she should really stop daydreaming. Are Helga and Ho Lee really going to start going on quests together? Ho Lee begins to gush over the necklace that his beloved Miss Leo has gifted him, but even now she maintains her calm demeanor and tells him to focus. He excuses himself as the call of nature had beckoned him and he finds a secluded corner in the forest to do his business. To his horror, he glances up into the face of none other than his obsessed lover Fleur, who tells him to continue with a rueful grin. What a pervert! Ho Lee instantly tries to cover up, but Fleur uses this as an opportunity to pin the blame on the poor boy, saying that he was attempting to seduce her. She makes an effort to come on to him, and while backpedaling, he loses his footing and bangs his head on a tree trunk. When he regains consciousness, he is shocked to see Fleur's aroused eyes staring into his, as her semi-clad body has made itself at home next to him. She tries to convince him that they had engaged in something more, but Ho Lee instantly denies it, saying that he would never do so. Fleur is not the only one to take no for an answer, and she once again forcefully tries to make a move on Ho Lee, but by then, the lad had made his escape. Too embarrassed to go into any details, Ho Lee remains mute about the whole incident in front of Leo, and simply requests her to continue their journey. Leo looks at him with awe and admiration, as she thought he had just fought a strong beast and won, thus explaining his disheveled look. Poor, innocent Leo, if only she knew the truth. Another completed quest under their belts, Ho Lee and Leo make their way back home, discussing the details of their battle. Ho Lee compliments his female counterpart, saying she had performed exceptionally well while also once again appreciating the gift she had given him. Alas, their sweet moment was cut short by an appearance from none other than the menace herself, Fleur. She greets Ho Lee enthusiastically, while the boy is anything but pleased to see her. He catches sight of her seemingly protruding belly from under her dress, and inquires about it. The she-devil proclaims that he had impregnated her during their interaction in the forest, and now it is his duty to look after them as the father. Long past the formalities of being nice, even Ho Lee's blood is beginning to boil at this point, and he loudly protests his innocence. Despite his objections, the delusional Fleur is adamant that the child is Ho Lee's, and she refuses to back down. Meanwhile, Leo is surprisingly quiet. Trying to take in the fact that Ho Lee had impregnated a girl was such a shock to her that her emotions could not even comprehend jealousy. However, once Fleur mocks Leo, saying that her and Ho Lee's fate is intertwined, Leo is unable to control her anger and attacks Fleur. Although no lasting damage is done, unfortunately, a cushion is revealed that the crazy girl had been hiding beneath her dress to feign pregnancy. Leo realizes that she has been tricked, and her anger now knows no bounds. Unable to read the room, Fleur attempts to make a feeble joke, but then even she understands the danger and pleads for Ho Lee's support. The young warrior knows that she has brought this on herself, and wisely decides to stay out of the matter. With blood dripping down her chin, a female demon attempts to make her winged escape while nursing a wound. Her eyes display obvious fear as she glances back at her opponent who looks like she barely broke a sweat. Metal claws can be seen attached to the assailant's body, which seems to be her preferred form of attack. 
The woman mocks the demon, saying she expected a tougher battle against someone rumored to be the same strength as the Sacred Sword, which was Leo's title. Meanwhile, there's trouble in paradise, as Holy makes an effort to brighten up Leo's gloomy mood. It seems that Fleur's shenanigans have only increased Leo's jealous tendencies tenfold, and she proceeds to let out her anger on poor Holy. He attempts to reassure her that she is the only girl he will ever have eyes for, no matter how many girls come into his life. However, the reassurances fall on deaf ears, and the warrior walks away in a huff, leaving Ho Lee reminiscing about the time when it was just him and her. He suddenly senses someone behind him, and the woman with the metal claws appears with a creepy smile planted on her face. She reveals her name to be Melvi. Melvi then proceeds to make light conversation with the warrior, saying that she is surprised that the Sacred Sword had found a partner, and even more so that Ho Lee had made her much more soft-hearted than she was before. Events take a dark turn, when Melvi offhandedly inquires if the old, much more brutal Leo would return if she killed Ho Lee. Melvi continues boasting about her strength, saying that even the supposed strongest being in the world had merely given her a slight scratch in combat. She advances towards Ho Lee, and makes it known that she expects to have a tougher fight from someone the Sacred Sword held in such high esteem. Despite the danger he was in, our dense, albeit dedicated protagonist could not tear his eyes away from the assailant's perfectly formed abs. In his mind, he was telling himself how great they looked, although they weren't on par with Leo's flawless muscles. Melvi mistakes his silence as a strategy to come up with a plan, and attempts to attack him. However, he grabs her hand and heals the scratch that she had there, much to her disbelief. Comedically, Holy proceeds to ask her to continue grinding if she hopes to achieve the perfect physique. With no sense of the perilous situation he was in, he even asks her to come forward so he could examine her abs up close. Even now, Melvi doesn't even take him seriously, thinking that he was simply trying to distract her. She uses her metal claw to stab him through the shoulder and he falls to the ground, clearly injured. Just when it seems that he might be at the mercy of the evil being, none other than Fleur comes to his rescue. Armed with a sword, she courageously faces up against Melvi while protecting the man she is overly obsessed with. Love really does make you do the craziest things. Now seeing her up close, Fleur realizes that she recognizes Melvi. The attacker had been one of the Imperial Knights and had been considered the strongest. However, after her defeat against Leo, out of shame she left the Knights. Melvi reveals that she had spent her time alone to make some improvements to her armor from the Demon World, while flexing her Demon Claws. Melvi mocks Fleur and says that she never defeated her previously when she was in the Imperial Knights, so how would she fare against her now? Ho Lee then lets out a grunt of pain, much to Fleur's relief. It is a miracle that the Metal Claw had only scratched him with no major damage. The love-struck warrior shows her remorse that she was unable to come and defend Ho Lee sooner, and takes advantage of this opportunity to ask him to make her his slave if she wants the fight. He flat out refuses, but her determination is not to be deterred, and with a loud declaration of love, she attacks Melvi. Caught off guard, the assailant is unable to defend the attack, and loses her claw tail. She appreciates Fleur saying that she has grown stronger. Not wanting to underestimate her opponent, Melvi then reveals multiple claws in the place of the one she lost, much to Fleur's horror. A slight knock on the head pushes the poor warrior to the ground, and the battle is over before it barely begins. Malavi then reveals the reason for her visit, saying that she wishes to have a rematch with Leo, as she wishes to avenge her last embarrassing defeat against the Sacred Sword. By defeating her, she would be able to regain her title as the strongest. Talk about the devil and she shall appear. Leo makes a nonchalant entrance and instantly recognizes the former knight, despite her obvious modifications. She then catches sight of Leo on the ground, and her temper immediately rises. How dare this cocky, morally bankrupt creature even think of hurting her partner? Adding fuel to the flames, Malavi knocks Ho Lee, saying that he is one of the weakest and most daft opponents she has ever faced. As you can imagine, Leo did not take the taunts well, and while unsheathing her sword, challenges her to the battle Malavi craved. The rage is obvious in Malavi's eyes, as she recounts her previous spar with Leo. She says that she has given it her all, but it only ended in defeat. After her loss, her clan had shunned her, and she had spent the rest of her life plotting revenge against the Sacred Sword. Observing from afar, even Fleur is fearful for Leo, as the obvious enhancement in Malavi's strength would make her an almost invincible opponent. The clawed attacker opens up with a huge strike, that makes the ground Leo was standing on crumble, and debris flies everywhere. An attack of that magnitude would have been fatal for anybody, and Fleur lets out an audible scream, thinking that the Sacred Sword was done for. However, Leo is not rumored to be the strongest fighter without a reason. Much to Malavi's shock, the swordswoman barely has a scratch on her, and with a single swing of her sword, slashes the assailant's stomach. Malavi falls to the ground, clutching her torso. Leo points her sword directly to the girl's neck, and says that she would regret the evil that she had committed. Now on her knees, Malavi realizes why Leo is declared the strongest swordswoman. Her life begins to flash before her eyes, as her fear is evident. Just as Leo is about to unleash the fatal blow, Holy rushes in between the two women to save Malavi. The south-hearted youth pleads to his friend to not kill her, otherwise she'd be robbing the world of a perfect set of abs. He quickly backtracks, however, when he sees that Leo is not in the mood for any humor. 
He implores to her moral compass, saying that if she did carry out the deed, there would be no difference between her and the bloodthirsty killer. Furthermore, Holy says that her compassion and mercy are her defining traits, and the reason why he is in love with her. He then calms her down by showing her the injury that he has suffered is now all healed by his recovery magic. Her friend's logical reasoning brings her back to her senses and she sheaths her sword, much to Malavi's amazement. It shocks her that the two share such a strong bond that despite her strength, Holy was not scared and had rushed in front of her to stop her, and even more than that, the legendary swordswoman actually listened to the boy. Even though she had just attacked him, Holy knelt down to Malavi and told her that strength is not everything that a person requires. Ever the abs fetishist, he then asks her to focus on making her abs more well-defined instead. Fleur takes this opportunity to sneak up behind the female demon and knock her unconscious, declaring that Holy's self-righteous talk could wait. She then drags Malavi away for her arrest to take place. Meeting up for another quest, Leo is shocked to see Holy in the form of a girl once again. Upon asking, he reveals that the last time he had been a girl, he had felt much more agile and quick, and this would give him an advantage on their adventures. Leo has her doubts, to which Holy reveals a small vial, which he says is a potion that will change his gender back. She snatches it from his grasp and examines it. The thought of being a man with more muscle mass, along with her already superior intellect, glamorized her, and she takes a sip. Holy attempts to stop her, saying that he had not experimented it yet, but it was too late. A ripped Leo with a well-toned body stood in front of him. Holy's mind has also become more maidenly along with the physical change, and seeing how attractive male Leo looks, he felt aroused. A slight wardrobe mishap results in Holy trying to cover up, while now even Holy could feel the male hormones coursing through her veins. In an effort to control her urges, she punches herself in the face, resulting in her mouth bleeding. She then attempts to regain her composure and tell Holy that they should continue their journey, as if nothing had happened. If Leo was strong before, in a male body she is now invincible. She manages to slay all the demons without breaking a sweat, much to Holy's amazement. He notices a slight scratch on her shoulder and comes closer to heal it. Being in such close proximity to Holy's female figure, her blood begins to rush, and the male urge to hug him begins to overwhelm her. Holy's female emotions have also heightened, and every time he sees Leo, he blushes profusely. Not only that, he can also begin to care much more about his appearance, asking Leo if he should have a haircut. Things begin to become steamy, as Holy draws closer to Leo and puckers up his lips. Leo is confused and doesn't know how to act. However, just when it seems they might smooch, the potion wears off, and Holy switches back to a guy. So much for leading up to nothing. Leo lets out a huge sigh, but it isn't one of relief. If anything, he seems disappointed. Holy apologizes for his behavior, saying that he just didn't feel in control of his emotions. Leo has now experienced firsthand how it feels to be aroused as a guy, and ruefully imagines what could have been. Helga requests Holy to teach her how to summon a familiar, as there are times when she gets lonely on her travels alone. He hands her a charm for summoning, and with utter enthusiasm, she performs the ritual. However, instead of a minor being, she manages to summon a thinly clothed succubus. Even Holy is impressed that she managed to summon a humanoid on her first attempt. Just like everyone else, the succubus whose name is Liz is greatly intimidated by Helga and begins to plead for mercy as she thinks that Helga intends to fight her. Holy clears the misunderstanding and encourages Helga to make conversation. With a crooked smile, she introduces herself and brings forward the hand of friendship. Realizing that her new master is not a threat, Liz instantly warms up to her and compliments her smile. Moreover, she uses her magic to switch Helga's clothes into something much more revealing, much to the simple-minded warrior's embarrassment. Liz does not stop here, though. Upon finding out that Ho Lee is not Helga's boyfriend, she places a love charm upon Helga that makes her head over heels for Ho Lee. Helga comes closer to Ho Lee, her eyes filled with desire and longing. The succubus, meanwhile, seems to be enjoying herself. By now, Ho Lee had fallen over while trying to retreat. However, Helga continued to come forward. Ho Lee tries to snap out of her spell, but to no avail. With their faces almost touching, Helga makes the most absurd request. She asks Ho Lee to hold her hand. Liz is dumbfounded, as she thought that something more steamy would transpire. Seeing them hold hands makes her even more determined to push Helga further. She tells Helga to follow her instinct and ask Holy whatever she needs. Helga seems to be hesitant in doing that, saying that it really is embarrassing. The succubus thinks that she is succeeding and pressures Helga until the innocent girl implores Holy to pat her on the head. With her mouth agape, Liz finally admits defeat. She then breaks the love spell. Holy seems to be lost and does not even understand what's going on. However, he fulfills Helga's innocent request and pats her on the head, much to her delight. Seeing this wholesome moment, Liz is filled with regret that she was about to ruin such a pure relationship between two such good friends. She begs for forgiveness from Helga, saying that she did not deserve to be her friend. However, the soft-hearted girl instantly forgives her. She clasps Liz's hand and mentions how happy she is that she now has two friends. Barely having woken up yet, Holy is abducted by Fleur and taken to her villa. Here, she ties his hands and starts to make a move on him. Poor Holy is once again faced with an uncomfortable situation. 
With a beating heart, he attempts to make conversation in an attempt to distract her. He asks her why she is doing so because obviously all's fair in love and war would not be a logical excuse for this insanity. Fleur brings up the events of their battle with Malavi and how she had attempted to save him while throwing caution to the wind. She makes it clear that she expects something in return. Holy accepts that she had truly rescued him and once again expresses his gratitude. However, he still refuses to get physical with her and instead takes the entire blame upon himself. He profusely apologizes to Fleur, saying that he regrets the way he is treating her and despite her erratic behavior, her heart is definitely in the right place. Fleur is taken aback, as she feels that it should be her doing the apologizing. She then unties and releases him with a slight chuckle at how strongly he was showing his emotions. It is now Holi's turn to be shocked at how simply she let him go. He then makes his way back home. In her room, Fleur recounts what Holi said about her heart being in the right place, and mischievously wonders if her muse would ever be ready for marriage. Holi's ears pucker up when he hears about the grand tournament from Leo, which she clarifies is held once a year around this time. He inquires from his lover if she would be participating in it this year as well, to which Leo explains she has no choice. Since she has won the tournament continuously, they have reserved a place just for her. Holi reads the leaflet and is baffled by the prize money. You could easily buy a whole mansion with these winnings, but when he turns the leaflet around, his mouth is left open. It further explains that the winner of the tournament would have a chance to conduct a marriage meeting with none other than the Sacred Sword, which in itself is a lifetime opportunity. Ho Lee is left flabbergasted, but Leo doesn't think too much of it since it's a trick used by the king to lure in participants. The day of the tournament has arrived, and Leo watches from the galleries as the fighters battle against each other to reach the finals. King Filio III has arrived and greets Leo, who gets down on one knee to show respect to his highness. The king asks her why she has such a serious look on her face, to which Leo explains herself being on her guard and not taking any opponent as easy. Nonetheless, King Filio has more important questions at hand, and pushes to tell if she has found a man to marry yet. This makes her blush, since Holi pops in her mind, but she brushes the idea away. An A-class adventurer appears from the tunnel, looking malicious and out for blood. On the other end, his opponent is none other than Holi Dent himself. Shivers go down Leo's spine, who with bulging eyes shouts, What? The king, taken aback, asks if everything is okay, and Leo does her best to control her emotions. With a clenched jaw and barred teeth, Leo is super upset at Holi for taking such a rash decision. How could he be such a fool? The king notices Leo's expressions change and asks her what the actual matter is. He then looks at Ho Lee and claims that the poor boy doesn't have a chance and will be knocked out in seconds. He continues to degrade the fragile body of Ho Lee, which makes Leo sigh and say to the king that he has some pretty shitty eyes then. The king looks at Leo and asks where she got the courage to say such bashful words to him, since just a while ago she was being very humble and polite. Leo tells him to not judge a book by its cover and watch the magic. The A-ranked adventurer stares at Ho Lee with blood in his eyes and a cheeky smirk, and tells him that he will not go easy on him due to his principles. The adventurer charges at Ho Lee to end the match in one go, but Ho Lee dodges the attack and thanks to his training with Leo, his supersonic speed is no match for the man. Ho Lee gets up behind him and turns up the heat by blasting him with his magic. The match ends with Ho Lee being the winner. The king admits that he judged the lad a bit too soon. Leo winks back at the king and tells him she told him so. Seeing Leo being so relaxed and carefree is surprising for Filio, who has throughout his life never seen this version of her. The Sacred Sword could not contain her emotions. Firstly, she is angry at Ho Lee for entering the dangerous tournament without telling her, and secondly, she can't believe he so easily just defeated an A-class adventurer. She goes downstairs to the area where all the competitors are waiting for their next face-off, but she holds herself back from entering the room since she assumes it could make everyone go crazy. Instead, she decides to take a peek through the bars of the wooden gate. All the female fighters are gathered around the adorable Ho Lee and congratulating him for the way he had performed out there. They could never have believed that he had it in him to defeat the other guy. Ho Lee, being humble, tells the beautiful looking girls that they are just exaggerating the whole thing and it was just nothing special. Leo, on the other hand, watches through the iron bars and is surprised to see that everyone is doting over him like crazy. One of the participants asks why he even chose to take part now when he didn't in the past. It surely must be for the huge cash prize. But Ho Lee disagrees with them that he isn't after the cash prize, but in fact for the other prize, which is to get a marriage meeting with the Sacred Sword. This makes everyone wonder if he is in his right senses and didn't get a knock in the head during the fight. Ho Lee yet again clarifies his stance and love for Miss Leo, which gets her heart to beat dramatically fast while she is busy eavesdropping. The guys and girls laugh and ask what does he even like about her, and that's when our Ho Lee gets started on Leo's perfect shaped abs and later her personality. The abs part is overheard by a girl named Randa, who like a cat, tiptoes towards him and asks if her abs are better. She takes his hand and lets him feel her abs. Leo in her head starts screaming. How could a random girl just let a man touch her abs? Randa admits that she has fallen for him. It's love at first sight. She makes a little wager with Ho Lee, 
If he loses against her in the semifinals, the two of them can go out on a date and he can leave the Sacred Sword behind, since she is way prettier and has better abs than her. It is time for Ho Lee to decide what his decision shall be. Ho Lee sits on her seat next to the king, clearly pissed at what she had just heard down in the room. Her dark expressions give the hint that she just might kill someone. The king tries to ease her down by offering his ear, if she wishes to share anything. When will this king learn? The semifinals have started, Ho Lee against the notorious Randa who has offered herself if she wins the round. She reminds Ho Lee of their little wager back in the room about going out on a date, but Ho Lee isn't moved. She pounds on him with speed and agility, focused on landing a punch or two on him, but he dodges her attacks. She commends him for his skills to dodge and being light as a feather, but gets ready to pick up the pace. But Ho Lee has other thoughts in mind, and not only does he feint her attack, but goes straight for her stomach and does the unimaginable. He starts caressing her abs. Ho Lee has a strong fetish for abs, we must say. Clearly caught off guard, Randa blushes and asks what the hell he's doing. Their wager was to let him touch her abs after the fight, not during it. On the other end, Leo is having a heart attack seeing the spectacle. Ho Lee touches them with dismay and says that he would give them around 40 points since they aren't as good as Miss Leo's. A cloud of darkness and anger replaces Ho Lee's timid and friendly expressions as he produces unimaginable magic from his staff. He blames Randa for degrading Miss Leo so casually, and thus she must be punished. Randa, quicker than a rabbit out for dear life, forfeits. Ho Lee succeeds in reaching the finals. The commentator asks him if he's looking forward for the cash prize, but his answer stuns everyone, which is to get a marriage meeting with Miss Leo, and the fact that he didn't want anyone else to reach the final except for him. These heroic and manly words make Miss Leo go all lovey-dovey for Ho Lee. The king couldn't have seen a more in love person than right now, when he watches Leo turn bright red as a strawberry in early spring. Miss Leo, like a teenager, holds her face with happiness. She couldn't believe that Ho Lee did all this just for her. In the shadows, one of the contestants spies on Leo before attacking her, but she dodges and slits her stomach, the blood splashing on her face. Leo recognizes the attacker as the shaman, who laughs that her plan has succeeded and uses her blood, which is on Leo's face, to transfer her soul into her body. The shaman smiles devilishly through Leo's body. Her plan to take the prize money along with her whole estate would finally come true. The final match has started, but Ho Lee notices that there's something wrong with Leo. The shaman tells her whole plan to Leo, which enrages him. The two of them face off against each other. Let's see how things pan out from here. The shaman laughs over Ho Lee's innocence. She has no desire to return Leo back and let go of the fortunes that lay in front of her. But for some reason, she starts feeling butterflies in her stomach every time she gets a look of Ho Lee. How could he look so darn handsome? The shaman attacks Ho Lee with intentions to kill, but her attack is stopped midway. The consciousness of Leo is still awake. It prevents her from attacking Ho Lee. It's only been a few minutes since she took control anyways. Ho Lee knows he could not win against Miss Leo, but still won't give up on her and would die for the sake of his lover. The shaman could feel her heart thumping. Ever since Ho Lee started speaking, she has been feeling nothing but love soar through her veins. He even has started looking very different as well, like he is some very handsome and strong hero who is out to win her heart. The shaman has never in her life felt the feeling of love or have ever been in love with anyone before, so all this is very much new to her. Ho Lee doesn't want to lose Miss Leo, so seeing her not moving and being stuck at her place, he decides to take maximum advantage of this opportunity and attack her now. He uses restraining magic to chain down Miss Leo and prevent her from attacking him or hurting herself. But the shaman has by now gained full control of Miss Leo and subdued her consciousness. She cuts through the magic spells and lands a critical hit on Ho Lee's torso. The devil has possessed Miss Leo's body in the name of the shaman, and after gaining full control of her, it shows no mercy to poor Ho Lee. Blood splatters from left to right. The shaman uses the sharp sword to deliver massive blows to him. Ho Lee has no other choice but to use his staff to shield himself. This battle has turned one-sided. Ho Lee gets down on one knee, regaining his energy and breath. He knows he is no match against the sacred sword. The shaman realizes that there is no killing allowed in the match, but if Ho Lee continues to be stubborn and keeps fighting, someone is bound to break. She tells Ho Lee to give up and stop being such a brat. Meanwhile, he tells himself it's all for love, and seems he can't save Miss Leo, so he must resort to his final trump card. He produces a magical card out of his pocket, and tells the shaman he would keep fighting, no matter the outcome. He throws the card in front of her, and a fireball explodes, producing smoke that has blinded everyone. He throws another card, which brings out Kuyu-chan to throw itself at her face. Distracted and confused, Ho Lee sneaks in and caresses his face against Miss Leo's abs. What he was hoping for... He now got it. A burst of energy rushes through his body, and Ho Lee becomes a sage, while he continuously repeats the word abs, abs, abs. Hair electrified, clothes floating in midair, and his staff holding the powers of a thousand suns, Ho Lee is unrecognizable. The shaman could not believe her eyes. This power is unlike any other. Was he saving this all for the final fight? Ho Lee aims his staff at her. Seconds tick by. 
the shaman knows he is about to wipe her off the face of the universe. Not even the sacred sword could block an attack of this level. She decides to dodge, but her feet are glued to the ground. Fear has taken over. The ball on the end of Ho Lee's staff grows bigger and bigger. She doesn't have much time. Ho Lee keeps saying the word, abs, abs, abs. He has also lost all senses, it seems. He releases the explosive energy through his staff, the radial being so wide, no one could evade the massive power. Leo slowly gains back her consciousness, but there isn't much time. She opens her eyes to see the great ball of magic coming her way. She draws her sword to block the attack. The energy and power used to build this is unlike any other. Screaming at the top of her lungs, Leo slices through the magical ball of fire and silences the entire arena where the fight was taking place. The smoke in the arena has died down. Everyone is on the edge of their seats. They have just witnessed the greatest fight in their entire life. Leo's unbreakable sword shatters into tiny pieces. Her face clearly bruised by the impact and her breath cut short by the energy that she has used to counter Ho Lee's powerful magic. Ho Lee stands at the other end, a short smile on his face. He knows he has done it. Unable to stand his ground anymore, he lets go of his staff and slowly swings forward to fall face first on the ground. But luckily, Miss Leo comes to his rescue, letting him fall on her shoulder. The battle has ended, and Miss Leo is crowned the winner yet again for another successful year. Ho Lee whispers in her ear that he believed in her all along, and that she would regain consciousness and be able to block his attack. She hugs him tight, and congratulates him for being able to put up such a fight and being the only one who could break her sword. The king sits in his chair. He is happy that the Sacred Sword has found someone capable enough of loving her. It has been a few days since the tournament, and everyone has returned back to their normal lives. However, things have for some reason changed between the two lovers. Ho Lee, with his sister Henri, meets Leo in the town, but she couldn't make eye contact with him at all. A bright light keeps shining from Ho Lee, and it blinds poor Leo's eyes. Not to mention, she can't stop blushing whenever she looks at him. Leo notices that Ho Lee has been carrying a lot of things, to which she inquires what they are. He tells her that they are all gifts and love letters he has gotten from different people after his battle in the tournament. This sends a sharp hit to her delicate heart, and she clutches her chest with pain. She tells him how whenever she thinks about him, a painful feeling grows in her chest. She almost tells him that she loves him, but is interrupted by a bratty Henri who screams that she knows what's wrong. Yapping at the two, Henri is pissed for witnessing such a spectacle and is angry that Ho Lee dragged her all the way just to see this. Miss Leo keeps fidgeting with her hands and can't keep a straight face. The intensity of the fidgeting reaches the point where her feet start pointing at each other. Ho Lee, concerned, asks if everything is alright, since she hasn't for starters looked at him directly and keeps playing with her hands. She produces the most adorable puppy dog eyes known to man and shyly asks Ho Lee if he loves her. Ho Lee reassures her that he has loved her since day one when he had first confessed his feelings for her when she wouldn't accept him. This makes Leo giggle like a little girl, which really isn't the time since they are in the middle of fighting goblins, and Henri is pissed to the core that the two of them are busy flirting with each other and not giving her backup. Leo apologizes and draws her sword to fight, but her attack merely bounces off the goblin. She isn't even making an effort to fight. Henri, now genuinely concerned, asks why she is behaving like a little girl, to which Leo explains how her body is behaving differently, especially around Ho Lee. She has no control over it. Ho Lee inspects Miss Leo. He touches her cheek where the shaman before had controlled her, but doesn't feel any residue magic. However, he does feel her temperature rising faster than ever. Miss Leo can't divert her gaze. She doesn't want to look at Ho Lee, otherwise her heart would start beating like crazy again. All of those suppressed feelings are finally coming out. Henri can't take it anymore and roars out in anger over this behavior. This frightens the goblins to scatter away. We are given a short introduction in this part. Miss Leo introduces herself as the Sacred Sword, since she is considered the strongest fighter ever. But for the past few days, she has been feeling different, feeling weaker, ever since her suppressed feelings for Ho Lee have started to come out. The two walk around town, and Ho Lee is surrounded by two girls who show them their abs and ask him to rate it, to which he gives them 30 points. Leo is pissed off, and demands why he is even doing this, and he explains how he has gotten the chance to touch and feel abs after his battle with Randa. She looks at him angrily and demands that he now touch her abs so that she could remind him of who has the best ones yet. Ho Lee is greeted by Fleur, who hasn't planned to kidnap him for once. He asks her why she is here, to which she unbuttons her shirt and shows her well-informed abs. This makes him blush since they are perfectly balanced and made. She asks him to rate them, to which he gives them 80 points, after perfectly feeling them with his hands. Their little moment is interrupted by his teacher, Master Harriet, who demands if the girl is his lover, which Fleur lies by saying she is. Master Harriet tells him that she must take matters into her own hands and kill her for his own good. Holy's master is not one to listen to him try to defend Fleur. She tells him to back off while she does the test that she feels fit. Knowing that Holy would just get in the way, she uses restraining magic to tie him up and prevent him from being a hindrance. She uses her bow to pierce Fleur's heart with an arrow of perjury. The arrow hits a target, but it doesn't feel any pain when it goes through her body. 
Holy muffles out indiscernible words between the thin ropes that have been used to tie his mouth, clearly alarmed at what his own master has done or is even planning on doing. She tells him the purpose of the arrow is to make Fleur speak nothing but the truth, and if she does happen to lie, then the arrow will kill her at once, an imminent death. His master talks about her travels from a distant foreign land, so she could meet Ho Lee and so he has no idea of his girl and the relationship. Pointing her bow at her, she asks the main question, does she love Ho Lee? Fleur's cheeks burn from left to right, and she shyly answers the question, I love Master Ho Lee. His master smirks that answer, since it wasn't a lie, and demands that she give evidence of her so-called love, which makes Fleur scream that she has a taste of Master Ho Lee every day. That's when things start to get weird, and she puts further emphasis on being drunk in love with his scent, then how when she abducted him and smelled his scarf, which has become a daily habit of hers. She wishes for her body to be fully ready for Ho Lee when the time is right. Ho Lee's master is lost for words. Her eyes stare blankly at the floor, and she asks Ho Lee what the hell is wrong with this woman. However, Fleur is glad that she was able to convey all of her feelings. Ho Lee, after being released by the bondages of his master, comes out clear that Fleur isn't the woman that he is madly in love with, but that she is just a friend. His master takes a sigh of relief that Ho Lee's awful choices don't involve being in a relationship with Fleur, the crazy girl. She tries to make him tell her who his lover is, but Ho Lee refrains from answering, since he knows that she would go out and kill her. Ho Lee, standing up against her, isn't acceptable by his master at all, and she angrily uses magic on him to re-educate him once again. A flash of magic ignites through Ho Lee's body, and he screams out of pain before being covered by a cloud of smoke. Fleur is horrified by what she sees when the cloud disperses, and it's little Ho Lee who is turned about 12 years old. His master picks him up and gives him the biggest and most adorable hug Fleur could imagine. She even starts playing with his cheeks and can't help herself from having a baby fever. After the cuddling session, she picks him up and plans to take him far away, where he could never come back to the town and exhaust his magical powers. Fleur tries to stop her, but she is too powerful and uses restraining magic to tie her up. The broom takes them a few meters in front before they bump into Leo, who turns around and has a sight of baby Ho Lee. In one glance, she recognizes it to be Ho Lee. Harriet, aka Ho Lee's master, stares at Leo with eyes filled with hatred. How could a nobody like her come in the way of them going back home? Leo has no idea what is going on, but hears Fleur scream from the ground, tied up, that the woman is trying to kidnap Ho Lee as a child. Leo has drawn her sword and is in no mood for this witch to take her precious Ho Lee away, especially when he looks so damn adorable and lovable. Harriet gets ready to fight, her magical powers taking up the air around them. She is ready to defend baby Ho Lee with her life. The Sacred Sword is surprised to see such magic and asks herself who the hell is she and what's her problem. Before the two could go head to head with each other, Ho Lee tugs on Harriet's cloak and whispers in her ear. He, in his childish manner, tells her, whenever he stares at Leo's abs, he starts to get butterflies in his stomach. Harriet is surprised by this and even notices that ever since they saw her, Ho Lee's face has been extra red and embarrassed. Even as a kid, he has had a fetish for well-made abs. Seems like this was a childhood desire. Alarmed, Harriet asks if this is the woman he fell in love with at first sight. Ho Lee fidgets with his fingers, then tries to say no, but it's clear that he loves her. The Sacred Sword gets down on one knee, and in the most beautiful, loving, and mesmerizing way, calls out to Ho Lee to come to her so she can pat his head. Harriet tries to stop Ho Lee, but he is not one to say no to, especially to a beautiful knight who has the perfect abs. He runs towards her with joy and happiness glowing in his eyes. Leo grabs him like he is her own child and names him Holy Cornelia from now on. This is all too much for Harriet, who has fallen on the ground in utter defeat. She knows she can't control Ho Lee anymore. The two lovers are busy cuddling with each other in broad daylight, but the spectacle looks somewhat like a mother and son reunion instead. Harriet knows that she has no choice but to turn Ho Lee back to normal, but stops when she sees baby Ho Lee get down from the hugs and start caressing Leo's abs. He stares at her abs and is in another world, but moments later, his magical powers reach a level that could not be controlled by his own master. She tries to use restraining magic, but to no avail. Ho Lee is not one to be stopped when it comes to being reunited with his lover and her absolute perfect abs. Harriet is still trying to capture the reason behind his strange boost of powers, which has exceeded her own now. She knows that if she gets in the way, then she would be blown into bits. However, Leo jumps to the rescue and charges towards Ho Lee. She has done this before and knows exactly how to calm the rage that is within him. Harriet screams for Leo to get out of the way, if she doesn't want to be destroyed. Leo pays no heed to the warnings and hugs little Ho Lee, and in her calming voice, reassures him that she is by his side. This makes him wake up and put a stop to her powers. Harriet is taken aback by the spectacle. With all her affinity with magic, she couldn't get close to him, but Leo did it in seconds, for the sake of Ho Lee. She knows she has been defeated, and tips her hat towards Leo, tilting her as Ho Lee's mama before leaving the scene. With Harriet defeated, little Ho Lee and Leo visit the public bath to relax and clean up after a tiring and well-won fight. Leo washes up like a mother and lovingly asks if his arm is fine. 
Holy, like a little child who just got his favorite toy, reassures her that it doesn't hurt one bit. They get in the bath to soak their sweat away, but Harriet seems to be already present there, butt naked and looking at Leo with judging eyes. Leo, clearly pissed at her, prevents her from touching her child. Her motherly instincts are kicking in already. Harriet has decided to let the duo be together and try not to steal Holy away. Nonetheless, she wishes to sightsee a bit while she is in town. She asks Leo, since it is quite obvious she loves Ho Lee, has she proposed to him yet? Which makes Leo bury herself in the water and mumble that she does not have the courage to do it until now. Harriet tells Ho Lee that Leo doesn't love her, which makes her lose her cool and quickly tries to clear her stance out. Little Ho Lee, however, with hope in his eyes, says he will work super hard to make the Sacred Sword fall in love with him, but becoming a great magic user so she should wait for him. Harriet is at a loss for words. She rests her elbow on the hot bath edge and like a caring teacher, watches Ho Lee. She knows that he has always been stubborn from the get-go. Everyone has forgotten about Fleur, who is still restrained by Harriet's magic and is lying somewhere on the ground in town. Ho Lee still has not changed back to his original age and is stuck in a child's body. Harriet has told him that he would revert back to his original self any time today. With a child's form, Holy would not be able to assist Leo in their quest, so she cancels their arrangements for the day. Fleur has escaped the chains and found purpose. Clearly that purpose for once isn't to kidnap Holy. She calls out to the Sacred Sword and Holy to come quick. His Majesty has summoned the two of them to his royal court. It seems to be an emergency. The two reach the Grand Castle, and the King, with all his powers, smiles at Leo and welcomes her to his humble palace. His eyes bulge out when he sees her holding a little boy's hand and assumes that she has given birth to her first child. That too, in such a small time period. But what is even more surprising for the king is that she didn't even come to him for guidance or blessings for marriage. How will he be able to explain it to her father that his only daughter got impregnated before marriage? Leo, not in a mood to fool around, explains to him that the child is Ho Lee, who has been turned into a child by some witch who happens to cross their path. She leaves out the details, though. Nonetheless, the king is worried that the two wouldn't be able to do the job he has thought of, but Leo asks for clarity and tells them to follow him. In the court are two other people. The neighboring country's strongest knight, Diana Aldridge, and the grand mage, Calvin Hazel Dine, are before them. The knight does look very beautiful. We hope she doesn't fall in love with Ho Lee, the way all the other women who have dueled him have. The king wishes for his toughest fighters to face off against the neighboring county's strongest fighters. Leo is confused by this strange request at this time of the day. Leo looks at her king with tired eyes and tells him that he is doing whatever he wishes all over again, without asking if she would like to duel them. The king apologizes but doesn't take back his decision to make them fight for the sake of showing the power of the kingdoms. Moving on, Diana greets the Sacred Sword and introduces herself. She politely asks if Leo would like to lend her a bit of a busy time so the two can have a little duel. That seems awfully polite. Leo has no choice and takes up the offer since it's on the king's orders. Diana looks at Ho Lee and feels degraded that they think she is not good enough to fit their best warriors and have sent a tiny brat to face her. The mage, Calvin, adds salt to Leo's wounds by laughing off the fact that she is weak and with a child. This is an easy win for them both. Leo cannot take this type of pitiful behavior and says she has been quiet for long enough. But before she can finish off her sentence, little Ho Lee charges towards them and tells them not to make fun of Leo Onichan and as her party member, he will take them both on at once. Diana picks him up by his collar and calls him a nuisance. The sacred sword, like a lightning bolt, draws her sword and slices the air near Diana, shredding off some of her hair. How dare she treat Ho Lee like that? Things heat up, and in the spur of the moment, the magic on Ho Lee also breaks, bringing him back to his original size, which means his clothes have torn off, revealing his spectacle staff down below. Leo, Diana, the king, and almost everyone in the court are left speechless by the sight of naked Ho Lee. This is a very disturbing unveiling. In the castle's courtyard, Diana sits and is being calmed down by Calvin, who laughs at the fact that she almost fainted by seeing Ho Lee's mighty sword. Diana comments on taking down Ho Lee with no mercy whatsoever. How dare he take them so lightly? Calvin asks about her first impression of the Sacred Sword, and her eyes twinkle with happiness. She remarks on how amazing the Sacred Sword is, and being rude to her really paid off. From Diana's shadows emerges the Black Mage Dolce, who is the third companion of the party, which makes this a 3v3 battle. Back in the castle, Ho Lee apologizes to everyone for the disturbing image he has brought and is now fully clothed. Leo requests him not to let her down since this battle means a lot to her. However, she started blushing all over again. It's been a while since she saw Ho Lee looking this handsome. She can't even think who their third companion would be for this fight since her heart is beating like crazy. Fleur has entered the courtroom and is their third companion for the fight, but she seems to be pulling a chain behind her. From behind her comes Melvi, with her perfect set of abs and revealing clothes. Since this is a battle for the countries, losing isn't an option, and that is why Melvi is here. Leo and Ho Lee are not one bit happy about this. Melvi looks at them with innocent eyes that are not one bit innocent, due to her past history with the adventurers. 
Leah refuses to team up with her, but has no choice since the king has decided that they need to bring their strongest warriors here. And if Melvi fights here like a proper teammate, she could reduce her prison sentence. Melvi devilishly smirks and tells them that if somehow she accidentally tries to kill them, though then it's not her problem. This gets her to be shocked by Fleur, who warns her if she does anything fishy, then she will punish her, and also tells her to say something to Master Ho Lee, but she just makes a pouty face and avoids eye contact. Fleur then loudly tells everyone that Melvi wanted to apologize for not thanking and appreciating Ho Lee for saving her back when Leo was about to kill her. Utterly embarrassed, Melvi shouts at Fleur for not assessing the situation smartly and blurting out the truth this way. Ho Lee forgives her and even accepts her in the team, which is swallowed as a sour pill by Leo, who screams at him for being so gullible. But Ho Lee won't let her boss him around Around and goes to counter-argue with Leo for acting strange and unreasonable. Leo turns around and leaves the area, saying if Holi is being so defensive for Melvi, then he can fight alongside her. She won't stick around. While walking away, tears roll down her eyes, her subconscious clearly confused for the sudden burst of emotions. Her heart aches when she thinks of Holi talking about another woman. Melvi and Fleur stare at each other. Things have gotten complicated. It is time for the great battle between the two kingdoms. Leo, Melvi, and Holi emerge from their corner. Melvi notices Leo ignoring Ho Lee, and also that her eyes are swollen from crying earlier, not to mention her face is thin as well. Diana and Dolce are both fangirling over their idols Leo and Melvi. Calvin, on the other hand, has no idea what to say or do to make these girls stop. The fight begins, and Leo charges in with supersonic speed to finish off Diana in one strike. Diana isn't too far behind. She knows she can't defeat her one-on-one, -on -one, so plans to pull out. Diana uses advanced light magic that only Holy's master could use. He could even see her after image due to speed, which is remarkable. Diana brings out her mallet and bonks Leo on the head, which sends her splattering down on the ground. This one hit knocks her out. No one could believe that Leo could be this weak. With Leo out cold and under the shadow of Dolce, Holy and Melvi are left. Melvi uses her demonic powers to end them, but Calvin uses his advanced magic prowess to protect his teammates. Diana smashes Holy's face with her mallet and reprimands him for being in Miss Leo's company and making her weak. He is better off not existing. Holy is mad that Diana called Leo weak and uses his trump card for the sake of his kingdom. He apologizes beforehand to Melvi and seconds later starts caressing and feeling her abs from behind. This makes her squeal in satisfaction or shame, but it does its magic on Ho Lee, and his staff emits the strongest magic that barely misses Diana. Calvin has realized that they are up against a real team now, and it's all thanks to Melvi's abs that are rated 85 points. Leo wakes up and is told by Dolce that she is in her realm and it's pointless for fighting. Leo starts crying, which is alarming for Dolce, but nonetheless, Leo is still ready to fight, but she knows that Ho Lee might hate her now. Bawling her eyes out for maybe losing the one person who loved her, Leo doesn't wish to leave the realm. Dolce, feeling awkward at this point, decides to see what is happening outside and is surprised when she sees Diana and Calvin cornered by Ho Lee alone. She is hugged from behind by Melvi, who has taken the opportunity while the other two were busy. Melvi, being a demon, mocks Leo for even thinking she had a chance with Ho Lee. She never even confessed her love for him or accepted him, so getting jealous when he talks of other women makes no sense. All of these words pierce Leo like blunt swords, and she emerges from the shadows. Melvi tells her not to disappoint her this time, and Leo tells her she won't at all. Ho Lee has drained himself after going all out against Diana and the mage Calvin, who have been on the receiving end this whole time. Diana seizes her opportunity and rushes towards Ho Lee with her magic mallet to knock him out and finish this fight once and for all. She smashes the area where Ho Lee was standing, but unfortunately for her, the Sacred Sword has come to his rescue, swooping him from below like his knight in shining armor. Ho Lee, in broken words, thanks Leo for saving him. Calvin looks behind and demands Dolce why the Sacred Sword has been released, and is met by the intimate image of Melvi giving Dolce the warmth that she so much desired. She places Ho Lee down and apologizes for not being strong enough. She opens up to him for being scared and that she might lose him to other females. Ho Lee smirks and reassures Leo that he will always only have eyes for her. This warms her heart and she allows him to look at her as much as he wants. Turning around, Leo is now ready to face the mage and Diana all by herself. This time, she doesn't hold back, and says she feels the strongest she's ever been, and like a lion's roar, obliterates Diana's magic mallet in one hit. Diana's eyes sparkle with happiness. She knew that Leo had it in her. This was the power and might that she was searching for for so long. Calvin captures the sacred sword behind bars with his magic known as Holy Imprisonment, hoping that this would buy them some time. But boy was he wrong. Leo is in no mood to play games, especially when they had the time to play around when she was at her lowest. She uses her sheath to knock out the mage, who sadly looked quite strong in the beginning, but has turned out to be weak. Sweat trickling down her forehead, Diana thanks Calvin for buying her enough time. She produces light magic hammer of love, which if we're being honest, is in no way light magic. She proposes her feelings for the sacred sword and asks if she would accept her feelings of love, which were rejected instantly. 
Diana, nonetheless, still does her very best to lift the humongous hammer, but it seems her love for Leo is too much for her to handle. Leo approaches Diana rather confused, and slices through the hammer's handle and knocks out poor Diana. The battle has ended, where Diana's love was too immense, making her team lose. Leo rushes towards Ho Lee, who has been out cold for quite a while now, and looks really adorable while sleeping. She holds Ho Lee extremely closely to her chest, and even hugs him with every bit of affection and love that she has in her heart for him. Diana, Calvin, and Dolce get back up after treating their wounds. Diana especially is angry, but not for losing, but merely by the fact that Leo deeply loves Ho Lee. With teary eyes, Diana admits that Ho Lee is by far a strong fighter, but if he does not make Leo happy or treat her right, then she would make it her mission to kill him the next time. Calvin, half embarrassed, tells Diana that there is no way for a fan to make such bold statements. The trio leave, and Leo is left crouching next to Ho Lee, finding the words to explain she doesn't love Ho Lee. The tournament has ended and all the participants make their way to leave the arena. Leo watches them leave, and deep in her heart, tells herself that Diana wasn't wrong to say she loves Ho Lee. Now, turning towards her man, Leo wraps her arms around him, places his tired head on her chest, and says the three words that she has been avoiding this entire series. I love you. But this is not the end. Their story will continue just a bit more. All that battling and exhausting ourselves to our limits deserves some relaxation, no? Diana and Dolce are in the royal baths, and they are overjoyed to see such a huge bath, as expected of the royal capital. Dolce isn't that overjoyed, and she feels ashamed to get naked in front of everyone. She wraps the cotton towel around her body, making sure her chest is well covered, despite it bulging out. Diana isn't that shy at all, and is the first to throw away the towel and compliments Dolce for having such bulging assets, which should be freed and not captivated the way she is doing right now. She tries to take away Dolce's towel, but she insists on keeping it. The girl's little fun is interrupted by Melvi, who skips through the baths, hand-tied, but oh so happy nonetheless. Melvi is happy to have met the girls in the bath and question her why she is moving around so freely, despite being a first-class criminal. The kingdom would have gone nuts if they are letting their convicts roam free. Melvi explains how her so-called guard just had a stroke, and now she is here for some relaxing time. She looks at Dolce and asks why she has been so quiet this whole time. Miss Dolce has just seen her idol naked, which is more than enough reason for her to fall down on her back and faint. Her towel also falls, though. Diana, on the other hand, is overjoyed that the Sacred Sword might be joining them. All their idols in one place is like a dream come true. The girl's chattering is hushed by Calvin, who enters the bath with a towel covering her chest. Yes, Calvin is a woman. Melvi is as much in shock as we are. The truth is very bitter here. Several days after the face-off between the two kingdoms, and a notorious match where Ho Lee, Leo, and Melvi came out as winners, the town has been going crazy for Ho Lee since then. Rows of people approach Ho Lee to get his autograph, or be his student. Some even come to ask him to rate their abs, which has become overwhelming for the magic user. Between the crowd approaches a beautiful maiden, dressed in the most delicate dress. She greets Ho Lee with a wonderful smile, like they have been friends forever. Everyone stares at the beautiful female and knows that she is out of their league. Ho Lee himself is confused to recognize her as quick as a fiddle, everyone scrams away upon hearing the name of Berserk Blade. The fear they have in their hearts is astonishing. Lisa, the succubus, who had conjured up earlier in the series, pops out of nowhere and thanks everyone for her hard efforts in transforming her master completely. She knew that Helga had potential, and so she bestowed upon her her womanly abilities, and now Helga is a changed woman. Even Helga feels pumped up and filled with confidence. A mischievous shine sparkles in Lisa's eyes, and she lets Ho Lee on a little secret. She has prepared a hidden place that no one knows about, too. Ho Lee asks about it, which leads her to lift Helga's skirt and reveal numbers written on her inner thighs. This gets Helga to blush and ask Liza what the hell she's even doing. This bit was a joke, but Lisa keeps pushing Ho Lee to tell if Helga has gotten sexier, to which he tells her she was always pretty no matter what she wore. This heats her up and she automatically changes back to her old look. Lisa is pissed that Ho Lee was able to ruin all her weeks of hard work to give her master a new makeover. Ho Lee is lucky he's cute. In another place, Ho Lee has been getting the special treatment from the one and only Sacred Sword. Leo has started to become extremely clingy with Ho Lee. He tells her not to get too close to him, but she isn't one to listen, and keeps pushing closer and closer to him. Ho Lee thought Leo would not reciprocate his feelings back to him, but this... This is way beyond his wildest dreams. A female approaches and calls out to Ho Lee, asking him to rate her abs once again. Ho Lee recalls giving this young lady's abs 30 points in the past. She lifts up her shirt to allow him a thorough investigation with his hands on her abs so he can give her a better judgment. He slithers towards her with an innocent smile, unaware of Leo being next to him, his hands edging to feel her feminine body. Leo grabs his arm and holds him from behind gives a deadly stare to the female and tells her to beat it and not get too close to Ho Lee. 
Her personality has also changed dramatically, Holy observes. He tells her not to behave this way since people will get the wrong idea. However, Leo has a different perspective and tells Holy if he goes around touching other women's abs, then things will get messy. Nonetheless, she allows him to directly touch her abs since he has been unsatisfied with other women's abs. Holy is a bit perplexed that he is being allowed by the Sacred Sword to feel, caress, and love her abs. It's like a dream come true. He starts caressing her stomach, feeling every inch of her well-defined abs, which makes her moan slightly and close her eyes in utter satisfaction. Holy's touches intensify. He does not hold back. Leo on the receiving end is unable to handle the pleasure, the want, and urge, and asks Holy to stop. All this touching and caressing is too much for her to handle. Their little intimate moment is halted by an angry voice that demands what they're doing in the middle of the streets. Leo turns around. She knows this voice and the anger. It's her father. Fear takes over Leo's body, and she knows she is in big trouble. The father's angry stare is enough to send shivers down her spine. Her father demands Leo to explain the bizarre scenario he just witnessed moments ago. Was this perverted young man fondling her stomach? Has she been impregnated? Leo disagrees, utterly frightened by her father. He then realizes what is actually happening. The young man is busy fondling her abs. Leo explains how Ho Lee has a fetish for abs, and other women of the town have recently been asking him to touch theirs, so to stop him, she has allowed him to touch hers instead. Her father slaps Leo's face sharply, and tells her to stop this stupid and pathetic behavior. He has not trained her to be a fine swordsman, only to fool around with other men. Ever since he heard about her victory in the grand tournament, he thought she had grown wiser, but this spectacle has disappointed him. Raising his hand again, he makes a move to teach his daughter a lesson she had forgotten. But his hand is grabbed by Ho Lee, and he turns around, making eye contact with Ho Lee Dent. Her father agrees that he has heard rumors about Ho Lee's performance in the tournament, and many people have started even calling him the strongest magic user ever. But if he messes with him, then Ho Lee will be seeing hell. But Leo's father was ill-prepared for Ho Lee's strength. He starts repeating, abs, 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 under his breath, and his powers grow tenfold. Her father backs off and is confused. Leo explains that Ho Lee, after touching her stomach, only is able to say abs repeatedly. She, in her heart, is extremely happy that her lover stood up for her against her father. Nonetheless, the matter dies down and he explains the reason why he is here, which is to tell they have located the whereabouts of the Demon Lord and the first wave of monsters will be approaching them soon. She and Ho Lee are tasked to find the Demon Lord and kill it before things get out of hand. This way, they would also become heroes. So for now, they must stop messing around and follow him for training. In another realm, the demons gather to break the chains of captivity and release the strongest demon lord the world has ever seen. All the warriors have been gathered at the capital to be briefed about the approaching hour of the demon lord. Diana and Calvin are also present, but it seems Diana has been distracted by seeing the great mage Harriet present and is awed by her powers and reputation. She notices Ho Lee talking to Helga and her heart stops midway. Diana immediately becomes a commentator and screams the vast achievements and powers of the Berserk Blade, tilting her as the only person who can come second best to the Sacred Sword. And to think she was done fangirling. Leo has entered the room, and bless Diana's stars, she just hit a jackpot. All her idols are present in the same room, ready to fight the Demon Lord. Leo and Helga give each other deadly stares. Leo challenges Helga over who would manage to kill the Demon Lord. This important briefing has turned out to be a fangirling moment for Diana. The Demon Lord subjugation team prepares the night camp for the decisive battle. Leo isn't very pleased staying in a camp of so many people, since it gets noisy and bothersome. Ho Lee excuses himself from her so he can go and greet the other team members that were present there. Out of the bushes, Fleur emerges and asks Ho Lee if he's feeling alright, since he looks very much under the weather. Ho Lee's senses awaken in a jolt. He asks Fleur why she is here, but most importantly, why she is even naked? But she corrects him with a laugh and says she isn't naked since she has a ribbon tied around her smooth, shiny body. Now, while no one else is watching, she asks him to rate her abs one more time and shows off her stomach that is, well, very much bare of any covering. Ho Lee tells her he doesn't change his rating that easily, and it's only been a few months since she last showed him her abs. But the moment his eyes fall on her bare body, his world turns upside down. Her abs look extremely wonderful. His ratings about them have increased, and now they are at over 90 points. He marvels at her ability to train them to such perfection. That too, in such less time. Ho Lee congratulates her for achieving this level, and she tells him how she used up the little bit of her sleeping time to train her abs for him. She approaches Ho Lee and gets extremely close to him, letting her body rub against him, asking if she's still not good enough for Master Ho Lee. She even offers to move out in the countryside with him, since he knows Ho Lee cannot use recovery magic for himself, and it's a forbidden technique where if he uses it on someone else, he is in way of giving a part of his life to save someone. Tears cascading down her cheeks, she begs Ho Lee not to use recovery magic since she doesn't want to lose him. For the sake of Leo, she begs Ho Lee to not use it, and she would do anything to save him. Ho Lee at once rejects Fleur's proposal, and tells her this was the first time he has ever thought of a future without Leo. 
His heart gave way to his desire, and now he feels ashamed. Fleur, on the other hand, is mad, since she gave it her all to propose to him and got rejected instantly. Ho Lee uses this time to tell her a little story, where once he was out doing a quest and injured his arm. He awaited his fate to be killed by the ogre, but Miss Leo came to his rescue and killed it. Even though she had more wounds than him, she was not scared and was more focused on killing as many monsters as possible. Since then, his love for her and her abs grew day by day, until now it's difficult to not want her. And even though he knows he doesn't have much time, he wishes to be there for Leo and heal her wounds. That is why he can't love anyone else. This whole conversation is being heard by Ho Lee's master Harriet from behind a tree. Fleur leaves the area, telling Ho Lee how she has missed his chance to have a damsel like her. However, she cries her eyes out in front of Melvi. She couldn't believe she just got rejected. Melvi tells her to sober up and be ready for the big battle. Leo knows tomorrow is the big day for their face-off against the Demon Lord, and if things don't go as planned, she may not meet Ho Lee. She applies perfume and wears a very delicate and thin dress. She enters Ho Lee's tent with the intention of spending as much time as possible with him, but if things get heated up, she wonders how far they will both go. However, her dreams are shattered when she sees Henri sitting next to her brother, who is sleeping like a baby. Henri demands if Leo has any ulterior motives, which is why she is wearing such dainty clothes and keeping perfume. Leo, embarrassed and sad, tells her that she may not live in the battle, so she just wants to spend as much time as possible with Ho Lee. But Henri is smart and pulls her shirt up to show that Leo is wearing sexy lingerie underneath, and shows off her abs too. Nonetheless, Henri leaves the tent, and Leo gets on top of Ho Lee and starts kissing his cheeks as much as she loves. Miss Ermgard has been captured by the goblins, and they make plans to offer her to the Demon Lord. The goblin shaman is present, and they all witness the demon lord open her eyes from behind bars. Before they could offer Urmgard to the demon lord, the goblins tell the shaman they are being attacked by humans. Let's see what happens next in the final closing chapters. Leo feels uneasy. Butterflies are in her stomach, as she feels like this could be by far the most difficult battle for her. Ho Lee could see that Leo is uneasy, and asks if she is fine, to which he gets told that she is completely alright and that they should focus on the battle. They enter the Demon Lord's cave, and Leo tells her fighters that she will attack with all her powers and leave the trash for the rest of them to handle. Her main focus is the Demon Lord. They charge against the goblins, being the first ones to attack. The goblin shaman orders all his followers to attack the humans. By this time, the Demon Lord has also broken free from her chains and roars at the top of her lungs. She has lost control of her senses, and her battle instincts have kicked in. Holy looks at the Demon Lord with horrified eyes. He calls out to Leo and tells her with excitement in his voice that the Demon Lord's abs are so well defined. Leo scolds him for being so not serious in this moment, and not to ruin her focus from the heat of battle. But he tells her he has seen her abs before. This isn't the first time. Our man Holy remembers all the abs he has seen. His fetish is out of control. Nonetheless, the Demon Lord attacks Leo, and the two go head to head against each other in the most heated battle this manga has ever seen so far. But our man Ho Lee is not bothered by the battle, but instead run towards the Demon Lord and starts touching her abs. Leo is infuriated by him. Why does he have to go around fondling every female's abs he sets his eyes on? This is also the first time Ho Lee has touched an enemy's abs. Ho Lee caresses her abs and at once recognizes them. This Demon Lord is actually Miss Leo. The Goblin Shaman cackles and applauds Ho Lee's strong senses, agreeing that this is in actuality the sacred sword that they conjured up from another world, since it was the only way possible for them to be able to defeat Leo in this world. In that world, this Leo was abandoned, and her only will and want is to fight against anything and anyone. All this is because Leo has never met Ho Lee. The real Leo sees the beast-like female and is horrified by its sight. If she hadn't met Ho Lee, she would have turned into that thing. So Ho Lee saved her from a much dreadful fate. The Demon Lord says something, which is indiscernible, but the Goblin Shaman gets down on one knee, willing to follow any orders from her. She instead slices off his head, calling him outright noisy and a pain in the ass. She rubs her eyes, happy that she is finally awake and looks at Leo and asks if she is her. Looking at her mirror image from another world, Leo feels nostalgic, especially since she used to look like that in the past. Helga and Fleur enter the arena and see the Demon Lord, who looks very much like Leo herself. The Demon Lord, however, recognizes all of them and opens up about killing each and everyone who stopped her in her world. But above all, she is happy she is able to do it all once again here. She jumps and goes all out at Leo by delivering a mighty attack, which Leo blocks but she is too slow for the Demon Lord who slices her armor in two. Leo cannot grasp the situation. How can someone be this fast and have the powers to even land a critical hit on her? But she doesn't have time to think. The Demon Lord sends in a barrage of attacks, but Holy is quick to read her play and saves Miss Leo in time. Helga and Fleur come to the rescue and buy Holy some time while he takes a wounded Leo to the side. They tell the Demon Lord to not forget about them, to which she looks at them with angry eyes and is more than ready to kill them all over again. He lays her down and tends to her wounds. Blood pours out of her armor. Holy knows these wounds are very deep, and he would have to use his recovery magic to cure them. He smiles at Leo and starts the process to recover her wounds, while asking what's on her mind since she has been behaving very differently than when the fight started. 
Holy asks if what her father had said in the past had disturbed her, or if it's the current battle that is making her feel uneasy. Leo looks at him surprised over how he managed to notice these small changes in her, to which he tells her how he has been adventuring with her for so long, he is bound to notice the small changes. Holy pleads with her to open up, since then he would better understand what's on her mind, and she would also be free from any disturbance and fight with full power. Leo breaks and tells Holy with teary eyes that she doesn't want to stop adventuring with him and have her life become dull without him. She tells him how if she does win against the Demon Lord, she will become a hero and her father will throw them a big party, which will take up all of her time. Most importantly, she doesn't want to lose him and her connection with him. All these reasons have led to her feeling demotivated and having zero energy to face the Demon Lord. Ho Lee gives off a slight laugh, since he now knows what's been going through Leo's mind, and eases her tension by telling her that she doesn't have to worry about all that. Once they defeat the Demon Lord, the two will spend more time together doing so many other wonderful things, even if they don't have to be questing. Ho Lee reassures her that they will have loads of other things to do once this demon issue is resolved. Leo asks Ho Lee if she defeats the Demon Lord, will Ho Lee be the one to treat her to all these things then? And if it'll be okay for her to love him as much as she wants as well. Ho Lee, confused, agrees to her requests. If that's what she wants the most, which makes her jump in utter excitement, and tells Ho Lee she will go and kick her ass this very moment. Leo's motivation receives the strongest revival buff she could ever get. Ho Lee falls down on his back after healing such a deep wound of Miss Leo. He has never felt this drained, but it's all understandable since her wound was very critical as well. Leo picks up Ho Lee and asks if he is okay, but he reassures her that he just needs some rest and will be back to normal. Nonetheless, the Sacred Sword feels perfect and is ready to beat the hell out of the Demon Lord. She thanks Ho Lee for healing her, who has taken the support of the boulder next to him. She gleefully clutches her fist and tells Ho Lee that she will give it her all against the Demon Lord, since now she feels invincible. Ho Lee's face slowly drains of color, and his head slips forward as he calls out to Miss Leo one last time thanking her for being there for him and for being the only reason why he has had so much fun and felt so alive in this world. Even though it was the best time ever, our hero Ho Lee knows that this is the end for him and he would not be there to stay by her side anymore. With his final words, he slips forward and falls into oblivion. He is covered by darkness. It seems he has died, but we are met by the sight of an angel. An angel that looks like a set of perfectly shaped abs with a halo on top of them. It asks Ho Lee if he wants power. Confused by this request, he asks for an explanation rather than power. The angel explains how Ho Lee's lust has created a demon, who is one of the seven demon princesses called Asmodeus. And she is here to serve her master Ho Lee and awaken his inner powers once and for all. Ho Lee, on the other hand, is still very confused by what is happening around him and how a huge pack of abs is floating in front of him with wings. Helga, Fleur, and Harriet go head-to-head -head with the huge goblin army, smashing and cutting off every single one of them, but their number doesn't seem to end. Ari demands Harriet to cast some spell to make all the goblins disappear, but gets a smack of an answer back for ordering her around and do her part instead of using her mouth more than her fists. The beautiful fortune teller is also here. She uses her wonderfully smelling incense around the goblins, which to her is beautiful, but for the goblins is very poisonous, and they die on the spot grabbing their throats. Henri thanks the fortune teller for coming to their rescue, but she corrects her by saying her purpose is only to help her friend, Ho Lee. Miss Ermgard has been completely forgotten, and one of the dirty goblins approaches her to do something very unmentionable. She screams at the top of her lungs to be saved by the humans, but they pay no heed. Maybe it's because she's a demon also, but luckily for her, a hero is here, and looking very muscular and not at all like himself. Ermgard does not recognize him, but has fallen completely in love with him, especially when he has come to her rescue and grabs her by the waist and tells her her powers of love can change everything. My oh my, this hero surely is a sweet talker. Melvi, Helga, and Fleur are on the ground, completely defeated. Blood pours down their lips. The three of them have been fighting against the Demon Lord, but have not even laid a single mark on her. Berserk Blade tries to do a surprise attack, but her movement is still too slow. She nurses her wounds just like the rest of them. We get a flashback moment from the Berserk Blade, who recalls all the times she would look from afar and watch the Sacred Sword train and fight. In all her battles, Leo would never complain, no matter how badly injured and beaten up she would be. Instead, she would look for more opponents to fight. Helga waits off all the attacks of the Demon Lord. She stands no chance against her, especially with her already having killed Helga in another world. But in this world, she is not the same. She has a life, she has found love, and she has found friends she wants to protect. Helga breaks the Demon Lord's sword by her bare teeth and manages to even hit a critical hit with her sword on her neck. Even if it kills her, she is willing to do it for the sake of her friends. But all that inspiration suddenly ends. The Demon Lord holds her sword by her bare hands and applauds Helga's persistence to kill her, but it's no use. She may be stronger than the Berserk Blade of her world, but she needs to do more than that to cut her body up. With that said, she says goodbye to Helga and gets ready to kill her. Helga's luck has not run out, and Leo has come to the rescue, blocking the attack with her sword. Leo thanks everyone for holding out this long against the Demon Lord, who is surprised that Leo is still alive, even though she thought she had killed her. Nonetheless, Leo even appreciates Helga for her back there and allowing Holy enough time to heal her. 
Helga is lost for words and starts crying. She thanks the Sacred Sword for appreciating her efforts and for saving her from Death's Door. Demon Lord points her sword at Leo and mocks her for coming back for more. The battle was over before it even started, she says. But Leo will not back down now. Before she was in a different mental mindset and could not fight with a straight face, but now she has purpose. In the past, she would fight for her country, the king, her father, and comrades, but now everything has changed. She wields her sword for Ho Lee's sake and to do naughty things with him later, which clearly wasn't something she should mention, but love is crazy, right? <laughs> Moving on, Leo is boastful of her love for Ho Lee and openly expresses her desire and want to do all the naughty things she wishes with him once this battle is over. The Demon Lord is perplexed and asks if she even knows what she's saying, to which Fleur wishes she didn't hear a single thing that Leo has so openly told everyone. Leo gets ready to fight the Demon Lord who goes all out against her. Leo is not holding back at all, and even surprises the Demon Lord who thought she was the strongest warrior ever. She had casted away everything in her life for this and now is being overshadowed by a woman who wants to do dirty things with her lover. It's unacceptable, but that is the hard truth, and Leo delivers the final blow across the Demon Lord's body. Blood drips down her face, yet she is not one bit weakened. She has defeated the impregnable enemy and is ready to be treated to the best treat she could think of by Ho Lee. The girls remark at Leo's persistence and powers. They were at the Demon Lord for hours and couldn't lay a hand on her, but this turned on woman did it in a matter of minutes. Leo doesn't stay for their praises and walks off directly towards Ho Lee to be loved. The Demon Lord's lifeless body opens up its eyes. This match has not ended yet. Leo races towards Ho Lee and apologizes for keeping him waiting so long, but stops dead in her tracks when she sees him lying on the ground lifeless. Her world crashes before her and she picks him up. His body is as cold as ice. Harriet comes and is fearful. She knew something like this would happen, but not this soon. She explains to Leo how he has been healing her wounds throughout their journey and had reached his limit. This final time was his last, and now he won't wake up forever. Leo loses her mind and starts crying her eyes out. She never wanted to lose him. She worked so hard and did it all for him. She wasn't even able to propose her feelings for him either. She wanted to spend her life with him, but now he's dead. The Demon Lord has awakened fully and is ready for round two against Leo, but stops when she sees her crying like a child holding Ho Lee's lifeless body. But that doesn't stop her from rushing towards Leo to kill her. However, what does stop her is Ho Lee. He has awakened and uses unimaginable powers to throw her away, which she dodges. His first word after coming back to life is... Abs. It seems Ho Lee has come back from the dead and he is even more of her power than what he was previously. Ho Lee does not respond to any of them and simply gets up and with wings appearing from his back and a halo on top of his head, he looks at everyone and greets them, calling himself Asmodeus. An evil smirk appears on his face and he says he will now release his master's ultimate powers known as Final Abs Cannon. He jokingly tells the Demon Lord to dodge his attack if she can and almost wipes out an entire mountain with its intensity. He then approaches the Demon Lord and tells her it's time to die, but stops since his master aka Ho Lee has told him not to kill such perfect abs since it would be a waste and that is why the Demon of Lust's work here is done. She leaves Ho Lee's body and snaps back to reality. Leo races towards him and embraces him with her full strength, screaming how much she loves him and that he should never even think of leaving her. Ho Lee can't believe his ears and asks her to repeat what she says, but the conversation is interrupted by the Demon Lord who wants to kill them. She, however, is slapped by Leo to shut it and not ruin the moment. Leo's father comes at the wrong time too and tells her to deliver the final blow and become the hero, but he too is slapped and told not to ruin the moment. But it's too late and everyone rushes to congratulate Ho Lee. Leo knows that she won't have another moment and kisses Ho Lee with all the love in her body. She proposes her feelings for him and asks him to stay with her for the rest of her life. Ho Lee agrees. Two years later, all the girls talk about the wonderful wedding Ho Lee and Leo got and how they have moved into the outskirts of town to live a happy life. However, we now come to Ho Lee and Leo's new life and see them doing small quests to kill moles that have multiplied since they were left unchecked. This is the story of a female knight who has never been treated as a woman until it all changed on that fateful day. This wraps up the beauty of this entire manga. I hope you all enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe and comment on the next manga that we should cover.